Okay. We are on the air. Good afternoon, everyone. Greetings to all, wherever you are, whenever you are. Welcome to live coverage of Baltimore Orioles baseball, where today the Baltimore Orioles will play the second game of a three-game series against the Pittsburgh Pirates. All right, let me say hello to you. I'll be popping up down here in the corner in just a sec. There I am. How you doing? My name's Steve, a.k.a. The Bird Watcher. You can refer to me as BW in chat. That's an easy way for me to catch it out of the corner of my eye. Uh, and welcome to my channel. I'm so happy you found it. Uh, it's a brand new channel that I started here for the 2024 Orioles season. Uh, and I want to provide a community and an alternative source for following the Orioles for those all around the world. Uh, I know there's people just in the Baltimore area that might not have the ability to watch the game on a TV or hear the game on the radio, but there's also people throughout the country and around the globe. And do you know how I know that? <laughs> because I live approximately 12 time zones away. That's right. If I were any further away from Baltimore right now, I would uh, not be on planet Earth. I'm quite far away. So yes, this is a new channel dedicated to covering the Orioles on a daily basis, every game, every pitch. And uh, I hope you uh, stick around and follow us on this uh, journey through the 2024 season. So far, so good. We're off to a 5-2 and two start, and uh, today uh, we're going to try to make it 6-2. and two. Let me just go ahead and uh, acknowledge the chat here. Uh, we've got Card Crazed. Good to see you, Card. Sean, The Whip. By the way, Sean, I'm just going to refer to you as The Whip, okay? You need a cool nickname at this point. Sean is our resident minor league beat reporter. And uh, he also has some admin privileges, or what do you call it, moderator privileges. Uh, Purple Haze, how you doing? Sup with you? How you doing, sir? Or, or ma'am, I, I, I'm not sure. But uh, good to see you. David's back in. David, always a pleasure. Bill, awesome channel. Thank you, sir. Uh, Lizzie is in the house. Lizzie, it's a pleasure. Yes, folks, uh, what can I tell you? The last game, uh, the numbers were down from the previous game in terms of uh, viewers and subscribers, but it's still uh, on a pace that exceeds my expectations. Uh, I'm fully convinced that this channel was something that uh, the internet needed. Uh, if, you, if you look around the, the YouTubes, you'll find that there's a Yankees channel that has a person dedicated to covering games like this uh the blue jays have a channel like this so at some point during the winter i said to myself you know what this orioles team is just too good to not have a channel like this i mean what are we doing here we got to represent so that's what we're doing and you guys that are here early during this uh channel's history uh, it's going to be fantastic. I hope you guys are here to watch this channel grow and uh, grow the community as well. Have a place to hang out, talk baseball. And just as a disclaimer for those in chat, I don't see anybody new here. I recognize everybody. But, uh, you know, you know how these sports chats can get on these live streams. People love to argue. Hey, I'm all about having good civil debate. But remember, we're Charm City. Let's keep our debates charming, shall we? All right. We're going to have first pitch here in another 10 minutes, I believe. So I've got a little bit of time to get prepared, relax, maybe crack, crack open a, a Red Bull over here. I'm going to hope that uh, my energy level is going to stay up pretty well tonight. Uh, your boy uh, really had it rough there with that five-hour rain delay game and then uh, the opening uh, game against Pittsburgh uh, being at 3 o'clock in the morning for me. Well, it's four minutes till 3 a.m. now here where I am, and uh, I'm feeling pretty good. 
I'm starting to learn how to sleep, uh, you know, at crazy hours. Two hours here, three hours there. You know, whatever I got to do to make sure I follow through with this mission. And it is a mission, I got to tell you. All right. Uh, I'm going to wait a minute on trying to find the stream here. So let's go ahead and look at uh, today's uh, starting pitchers and lineups. Uh, for the Orioles, Tyler Wells will be making his uh, second start of the season. He has a record of 0-1, but uh, it was a pretty good outing for him, all things considered. He finished here. He uh, started the final game of the series against the Angels. Uh, we lost the game. Of course, that would explain the one in the loss column for Wells. He got off to a rocky start, but uh, he wound up pitching uh, what is considered a quality start. Six innings, giving up three runs. On five hits, no walks, so less than one batter or one base runner per inning while striking out seven, and again, no walks. So all in all, uh, Wells battled, and hopefully today he can maybe uh, get off uh, to a good early strong start and we can put some runs on the board for him and uh, see a win see a win home. Uh, for the Pirates, meanwhile, Bailey Falter, a guy that you might not know too much about, I certainly don't, but when I took a peek at the uh, Pirates' Twitter to see their starting lineup and checked out their comments section, uh, according to uh, Pirate fans, this guy is not very good. Uh, he's had one start this season, and while he has no record, an ERA of 13 and a half in four innings, uh, he gave up a couple of home runs, uh, gave up eight base runners, so two, two per inning, a whip of two. And this came against the yet-to-win-a-game Miami Marlins. So just consider that. He put up a struggling start against the only team left in baseball to win a game. So I'm saying we need to beat up on this guy. Let's go, right? He's a left-hander, which means the Orioles are going to put out a lineup today that would ref will reflect that. And you're going to hear me scream where is Kobe Mayo one more time because <sighs> there's just one thing with this lineup that bothers me considering what we have on our roster right now and uh, why Kobe Mayo on the team right now just would have made so much sense from the from the jump and all these left-handed pitchers we're facing but uh, first let's just go through the lineup keep the positivity going overall I'm feeling positive guys just got one little complaint. We'll go over it here in a sec. So uh, for all of you Oriole fans out there, uh, I figured maybe once in a while I'd pay a little tribute to uh, the PA announcer from old Memorial Stadium in the first seasons of Camden Yards. That's right. I'm talking about old Rex Barney. Here's my best impression. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? For the Orioles, batting first, shortstop, Gunner Henderson. Batting second, designated hitter, Adley Rutschman. Batting third, first baseman, Ryan Mountcastle. Batting fourth, the right fielder, Anthony Santander. Batting fifth, Third baseman, Jordan Westberg. Batting sixth, the left fielder, Austin Hayes. Batting seventh, the center fielder, Cedric Mullins. Batting eighth, the catcher, James McCann. Batting ninth, the second baseman, Jorge Mateo. All right, there you go. Now, what's my problem with this lineup? All right, uh, if memory serves, our last game of the homestand, we played the Royals, and Adley DH'd, and James McCann was in to catch. And, hey, I can't complain. McCann had two hits, including the walk-off two-run single. Uh, and then we had a day off, and then we played one game, where Adley's back behind the plate, and now he's back in DH again? 
when the day after tomorrow we have another day off? Like, come on. And the reason why he's DHing and McCann is back in the lineup is because we don't have another really good right-handed hitter to put in this lineup against the lefty, and that right-hander needs to be Kobe Mayo. I'm telling you right now. What you do here is you sit McCann. I love the guy, but he doesn't need to be starting three times a week. Come on. Uh, Rutschman's a catcher. You, you, you put Santander maybe a DH. Give him a day off in the field. And, uh, yeah, you uh, – or no, wait a minute. I don't know. Who, who's moving? Somebody's moving. I don't know. You put Mayo at the third. Maybe Westberg at second. Sit Mateo. I don't know. There's just got to be a way to get Kobe Mayo in the lineup. That's all I'm saying. Anyway, let's hope uh, we can – Get the job done with what we got. It is a good problem to have, isn't it? It's just every time I open up the uh, Norfolk Tides uh, box score every day, I'm looking at another three for five from Kobe Mayo, and I'm just, uh, you know, my teeth are starting to itch. All right, now we should be just a few minutes away from first pitch. Let me go ahead and get the stream up and running here. Make sure there aren't any issues. You never know. You never know, you never know. All right. Looks like we are sitting outside of Pittsburgh's PNC Park right now at the Roberto Clemente Bridge. That golden bridge that spans from the ballpark to downtown Pittsburgh. One of the charming aspects of this beautiful bar park, ballpark here. Uh, I'll get to the Pirates lineup here in just a second. And uh, there is some good news on that front. The Pirates have decided to give a couple of their regulars a uh, uh, a day of rest. So not too many excuses for us. Um, O'Neill Cruz will be in the lineup. Uh, he's been a hot hitter. Huge day yesterday. Three hits. Leading off playing shortstop. Brian Reynolds again in the two hole. He's in left field. Connor Joe in right field batting third. Jake Sawinski is in the cleanup spot in center field. Edward Olivares makes his first start of this series. He's the DH. Uh, Rowdy Telez is at first base, batting seventh or sixth, excuse me. Uh, Jared Triolo hit a home run yesterday. He'll be at third base, uh, batting seventh. Joey Bart, uh, who was uh, cut by the Giants, I believe, uh, not too long ago, perhaps within the past week. Apparently, the Pirates have scooped him up, and he's going to make his debut today. He'll be behind the plate, batting eighth. And finally, uh, Williams. I'm going to have to check on the first name of this kid. This is a, a backup infielder for the Pirates. He's only had a few uh, at-bats so far this season. Alika Williams, who's had a grand total of eight at-bats so far this season. He will be in the lineup today as well, which means... That uh, Andrew McCutcheon is sitting. Uh, their starting catcher, obviously, not in the lineup. And probably the biggest uh, omission here, Cabrian Hayes, their starting third baseman, who's uh, one of their better hitters. He was hitting third in the lineup in the first game. So, yeah, uh, a weaker for lineup for Pittsburgh than what they would optimally Buy put out Western for themselves. Chevy dealers, Chevrolet together, uh, let's drive. While the Orioles... Again, and by Valvoline Instant ah, I just Oil would change. love to Service see. And another see, thing, you know what? You can trust. Colton Kowser, I'm sorry. I know we're facing a lefty. I know I it's nice to guys. get as many righties in there as you can Here's against lefties and vice versa. But you mean to tell schedule. me maybe you can't uh, get the uh, a guy hitting 500 into this lineup? This tough Orioles you know, sometimes the lefty-righty thing only means so much. And if this pitcher, Bailey Falter, who is just series, now kicking around the uh, rubber, getting ready to this young season for start Falter. this one, 
If he's uh, if he's not too good of a pitcher, I think we can afford to uh, maybe throw Cowser out there against the lefty like this. All right, I guess I could be checking in with chat periodically. I'll do my best. To, by the way, guys, going forward, I'm not so good at keeping up with chat as most people. But first of all, it really is all about you guys sort of having a camaraderie amongst yourselves. I want to do my best to kind of between innings just sort of go through and catch up wherever I might have left off and make sure I get to everybody's uh, stuff in case maybe you're trying to shout something at me. If there's anything you were trying to tell me, you can type it in a second time. Uh, thanks again to the moderators here uh, helping out with uh, suggesting to like and subscribe. All right, Falter is taking the, the last of his warm-up pitches. We are just second. moments away so from getting started. Ryan it is a picturesque day here in Pittsburgh. Didn't Tellez tell you exactly what the temperature is. Well, maybe I can. I scroll down here. So Brian Reynolds 62 degrees, so yeah. 62, partly cloudy. The skyline with the backdrop of downtown Pittsburgh with that bright yellow bridge. I mean, it is just a... Gorgeous park. Very field. happy to be giving you uh, coverage of today's Michael game because if I'm not watching the game, the game at Camden Yards, this is this is a First ballpark I like to see a game play. Yeah, I'm intrigued by this. Yeah, this he was so yeah, the Pirates overall. picked up Joey Bart. Yeah, that that's good, that's on, a, on a good pickup for that. them. I mean, he uh, came up uh, a big Not prospect. Uh, I had going. Fitzy on here. He was talking about him just the other day during that rain delay we had. He was uh, supposed to be the next Buster Posey. Uh, and then things just sort of didn't work out in this spa space of about two seasons. He went from being uh, the thought to be catcher of the future to now being cut and now picked up by the Pirates. Here we go. First pitch of the game to Gunnar Henderson from Falter is low for ball one. We are underway here in Pittsburgh. Pitching last year. Let me go ahead and uh, refresh this and see if we can get the uh, animations up for you. The next pitch is swung on and hit in the air to left center field. There's Backing Swinsky. up as a center fielder and near the edge of the track, he makes the catch. Gunner flies out to Rushman. deep left center Catcher field Speaking of to catching, begin the ball game. One down and up come. Up steps Adley Rutschman. All right, don't fumble so early, Steve. It's a long way to go. A dozen, including Joey Bart. Oh, did Today, I? Uh, we're going to give Neil Walker a couple of I, innings. I, the sound is down, by the way, on the game, the right? You guys can't hear the eight, game sound. Think that, uh, I'm hoping. You will I'm hoping. Did I just say hoping? Am I going to be able to talk tonight? First pitch to Rutschman is a breaking ball in there for a called strike. My goodness. I am mush mouthed, and it's the top of the first. The 0 1 to Adley. Swung on and hit softly to short right at O'Neill Cruz. That's a much better start, by the way, for Billy. He has a big smile on his face. I think he was expecting that ball to be coming at him a lot harder than it did. This is a good sign, Greg. You're going to see a lot of fastballs. It's like he braced himself for a hard line drive, and instead he was a soft liner. So Rutschman is retired, two away, bases empty. You're going to see that and that'll bring up Ryan Mountcastle. Not much change up usage or sinker usage, but you can hear the game. Okay. Right there, Good to know. I apologize. <laughs> Unless you're going up and in on a righty, of course. <laughs> I had a feeling. Oh, that could have been a problem there. If that lasted any longer. 0 and 1 on Mountcastle. I always forget to do something. Here's a swing and a miss. A big cut there from the first baseman. And he falls behind 0 and 2. Mountcastle off to a really nice start, both offensively and defensively this season. And the 0 2 from Falter is swung on and popped foul behind the plate. Count remains no balls and two strikes. Thank you, Card. Thank you, David. Sorry about that. Ramon Urias as well, I know. You see, again, I, 
I, I'm trying to wait between things. We got two strikes and two outs, so it'll only be a sec probably. This is hit on the ground a second, and that'll retire Mountcastle. So the Orioles go three up, three down. Ah, boy, this Bailey Falter guy hoping to jump on him in the first inning, you know, sending up our big boys, but uh, we get retired one, two, three. We go to the bottom of the first. Orioles nothing, and the Pirates coming up. If you're lurking, consider subscribing. That's right. Uh, Ramon Urias, as well as I know he is a gold glove, but he only has one hit. Yeah, and it just came yesterday. Jackson Holiday and company are at his heels, knocking on the door, just waiting to get in. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, I, I feel like a broken record because I've done several streams now where the name Ramon Urias comes up and... Yeah, just, just to, you know, let it be known, I, I've got no ill will toward Ramon Urias. I think Ramon Urias can be a valuable player on another team. Uh, maybe not a team that's coming off 100 wins, has prospects waiting in the wings, and aspirations of World Series glory. Maybe on a team that's, you know, kind of middle of the pack, something like that. But uh, Snowstorm... What's going on, Lizzie? Are you being attacked by snow? I hope you're okay over there. Hey there, DK1. Yo. A new avatar every time you show up. I love it. That's commitment. So, yeah. Uh, the thing is, Tony Kemp, as much as Ramon Urias is a uh, bit of a hole in the lineup... Uh, Tony Kemp has even less value. So when Holiday gets called up, I would be very surprised if it's anyone other than Tony Kemp that gets uh, taken out of the roster to make that space. Tyler Wells on the mound again. Coming off that loss last Sunday against the Angels. Hoping he can uh, settle in early and not give up any of these early runs. And the first pitch to O'Neill Cruz is popped foul. 93 mile an hour fastball on the outer edge. The Orioles wearing their bright orange tops with their gray road pants. And this one's lined in the left field. And diving and making the catch is Austin Hayes. Say what you want about Hayes at the plate lately. He has been struggling, but Austin Hayes, if he can get to the ball in left field, he's going to make the catch, and he saves a leadoff base hit, perhaps even more, diving to make that catch. So there you go, folks. You put a gold star defensive play right out of the gate on the first batter of the game. Wells. Get some help from Hayes. All right, Brian Reynolds now at the plate. First pitch is inside for ball one. You lost a bet, huh? How often do you lose bets, DK1? And this pitch is just a bit outside, 2-0. and oh. Reynolds switch hitting, outfielder batting from the left side. The 2-0 is swung on and fouled off to the right. Yeah, Hayes, Hayes is money, especially, you know, no matter what we do, we have to put out a lineup, at least when we're at home, where we have a solid defender in left field because it's basically two center fields in, in Camden Yards. Here's another foul ball off to the right. Two and two on Reynolds, one out. Bottom of the first, no score, base is empty. A little bit of a delay as that foul ball, foul, foul ball had to be retrieved by the ball boy there. Okay, we're ready to go now. The 2-2 offering to Reynolds is swung on and chopped foul again off to the right.
Let me link the Fox News. What are you talking about? Click the Fox News link. I, I'm in the middle of calling a game. I can't click links right now. Uh, the 2-2 pitch is hit on the ground to the first baseman, Mountie, and he'll tag the bag himself. And that will make two outs. Two down, nobody on. And up steps Connor Joe. Not to be confused with Cotton Eye Joe. All right, first pitch to Joe is upstairs, about 10 inches above the zone there. 1 0 on Connor Joe. Swung on, hit on the ground to third. Westberg has it, throws to first in time, and Wells has himself a clean one, two, three first inning. You'd love to see it. We're through one here in Pittsburgh, no score. It's about snowstorm in Orioles. Snowstorm in Orioles. Is there a word missing in that? What am I? I'm confused. Hey, folks, maybe you see a little message at the very bottom of your screen. Maybe one day I'll make it nice and shiny and really fun to look at, like, you know, the cool YouTube channels do. But it just says, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing if you haven't done so already. Small channel looking to grow, Birdland and the baseball lovers community. So, hey, during commercial breaks, I might uh, tell you, hey, why don't you think about liking there, subscribing there? Kind of what I got to do. That's the only real commercial you get from me, right? No sponsors yet. There's a snowstorm in Baltimore right now. No, there was a snor snowstorm. Uh, I mean, is there more to it? <laughs> like, what makes this newsworthy, I guess, is what I'm asking. Like, is it like just two feet of snow kept coming out of nowhere, or is it just some snow? I mean, I know it's April. It's a little weird for there to be snow in April, but it wouldn't be the first time. Crazy weather in Pittsburgh yesterday. So I guess, the, you know, the Northeast, just uh, it's that weird time of the year. Very windy. Very windy right now in Beemore. Falter, by the way, a five-pitch pitcher. Got a four-seam and two-seamer changeup. Actually, make it six. A curve, a slider, and a splitter. Maybe this guy's got one pitch too many. Up steps Anthony Santander batting from the right side against the southpaw, and the first pitch to him is a called strike. Santander batting 241. And the next pitch is inside, one ball, one strike. Everyone knows it's Wendy. All right, the 1-1 one, one pitch. Hit in the air on the second base side of the infield. The second baseman, Williams, a couple of feet onto the outfield grass, makes the catch. So Santander pops up to begin the second. Falter has retired the first four Oriole batters. How about we get a little offense cooking? Because the top four or five guys... Those are the guys that we need to rely on. The, the bottom of the order right now, not, not as strong as it could be. All right, here's Westberg. First pitch to him is up and away for ball one. Westberg stepping in. The 1-0 is swung on a missed. 86 miles an hour. 
What do we got? Like a, J a Jamie Moyer here? Was that an 86 mile an hour fastball? Oh, I guess they're calling it a slider on the uh, stat tracker. Didn't have a whole lot of movement on it. The 1-1 one -one pitch is swung on a miss. Now that was a fastball, 92, about an inch or two above the zone. Westberg took a big cut, but uh, couldn't reach it at that level. About letter high. All right, a 1-2 coming. And this one's inside and also a little bit low, perhaps. Two balls and two strikes. One out. We're just underway here at the top of the second. No score in Pittsburgh. Game two of a three-game series. The Orioles won the opener yesterday 5-2. to 2-2 two. Two, two is low, and the count runs full. And the payoff pitch. Swing and a miss. A challenge fastball, middle up in the zone, and Westberg swings right through it. Two down here in the second. Five up, five down for a guy that couldn't get a Marlin out. That's what I'm saying. He struggled against the Marlins. Don't tell me he's going to come in here and suddenly... Get through the Orioles lineup, three up, three down. Here's a first pitch to Hayes hitting the outside corner, belt high for called strike one. Hayes with the big defensive play in the bottom of the first. Next pitch is a couple inches inside, one and one. Pretty nice crowd out here on a Saturday. Again, 62 degrees. Much better weather than the home opener yesterday. The 1-1 one, one pitch is swung on a miss. 1-2. and two. What can we do to get Hayes back to his normal self at the plate? He's batting just 100 so far. I think it's uh, 2 for 20. Is what it works out to. Here's the one two pitch. This one's popped up. Center field. Coming in Suwinski to make the catch, and the inning is over. Three up, three down again for the Orioles. Bailey Falter is perfect through two. Why are we watching this junk ball left hander who couldn't get out the fish? Uh, retire the Orioles like it's no big deal. Come on, boys. Let's wake these bats up. Is it? Uh, is this our new style? We just uh, we just wait and uh, score runs after the seventh inning. That's what we do. We're like, you know what? This whole uh, putting runs up in the first five, six innings, that's for the Boyds. Oh, wait a minute. We are the Boyds. I don't know. Pittsburgh will send up the middle of their order here in the bottom of the second. Sawinski, Olivares, and Telez do up. Lefty, righty, lefty. All three have some pop in their bat. So let's hope Tyler Wells can keep it in the ballpark. Because when he does, that's pretty much his biggest flaw. Is just giving up those uh, home runs here and there. How we doing on uh, people here? It tends to uh, grow as the, the games go on. 38 people here right now. Thanks for being here, guys. And the like count at the moment, 12. Hey, what if we just made half the people here like what we're seeing? That would require, I don't know, five of you to do it. Guess what happens? Absolutely nothing to you. No salesman will visit your home. You won't be getting any junk mail. Uh, there won't be a Nigerian prince asking you to send uh, some money. It's just tapping a thumbs up and helping out the channel. That's all that is. It's no big whoop. That's all I ask. <laughs> all right. Sawinski at the plate. 
First pitch is a breaking ball called strike at the top of the zone, 75 miles an hour. Wells breaking out the curveball. I'm sure Sawinski was not looking for that. Sawinski batting just a buck 54 here in the early going. Next pitch is swung on a missed. Wells comes back again with a curveball, but this time it breaks low and in on the zone. Let's see him put Sawinski away after getting him in the hole with a couple of curveballs. Another curve. This time it drops below the zone, and Sawinski able to lay off. One and two the count. To Sawinski leading off the bottom of the second. Scoreless ball game. The one, two, tap, or uh, it's uh, fouled off, off to the left. As my chat appears to be falling asleep. <laughs> Do you guys want a topic for discussion? Do I need to maybe uh, bring up a topic? Here's a fastball that gets uh, out of Wells' hand early. McCann has to jump out of his crouch to catch that ball. Two and two the count now on Sawinski. Next pitch, a little bit high and the count runs full. It is awfully quiet, isn't it? What happened, guys? What happened? Where's the passion? Where's the buzz? The three, two, hit in the air. Right field, Santander, first he took a step back. Now he comes in a few steps to make the catch. One away here in the bottom of the second. So, so far, uh, it's been a pitching duel. Nary a base runner to be had on either side. That'll bring up the Pittsburgh DH today, Edward Olivares. Olivares didn't play in last night's game. First pitch to him is swung on and fouled off. Big cut there by Olivares, hitting 250, a homer and three RBI. What? So Lizzie playing nice is just being quiet. <laughs> Here's a line drive that's going to stay fair inside the left field line. Rounding first and heading towards second. Here comes the throw. The umpire with a delay call. He's safe. It's a double for Edward Olivares. So there is the first base runner of this game. That was a nice swing on a ball that was tailing away from him. Reached out and got it and was still able to pull it. Keeping it just fair. Accurate throw by Hayes to get it into second, but the ball just was too late. So with one out, the Pirates have a runner in scoring position, and here comes Rowdy Telez, the beefy first baseman hitting from the left side, takes a called strike. Owen won the count. What what's happening? What what, what again? Why can can we get along? What, there's, <laughs> I know Lizzie and I know Sean, and you're both cool. There's no reason you two shouldn't be able to get along. Lizzie, I don't think anybody's stopping you from doing anything. Lizzie, you you the only, uh, oh God, Lizzie, what 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 do you think is happening? Because you might be misinterpreting something. Swing and a miss by Telez in the count one and two. Exactly. Yeah, that's the thing. Lizzie, if you're trying to post a link, you're not able to. Just like if you were in my other channel, the home shopping uh, stream, you, you, you can't do that. Uh, here's a ground ball through the right side for a base hit. This is going to score the opening run of the game. An RBI single by Rowdy Telez, and the Pirates score first here in the bottom of the second. one nothing Pittsburgh on a one-out RBI single. What's what's the issue, Lizzie? Talk to me, okay? What what's the issue, Lizzie? 
I, I can promise you, no, nobody's out to get you, and everyone's just here to be cool. And what's what's the problem? First pitch to Triolo is a called strike on a cut fastball. Whatever's happening, I'm sure it's just a case of, uh, you know, misunderstanding. Everybody in here is cool. Let's just, uh, let's be cool. Let's let's try to just, uh, you know. You know how a text, text chat can be. Things aren't, uh, you know, there's no tone to go by or anything, and things can get misinterpreted. Here's a foul ball back. 0-2 on Triolo. One out, a runner at first, a run in here in the bottom of the second. Pittsburgh ahead, one nothing. <sighs> I thought we were able, we we're going to be able to get ahead early in this game. We're going to have to come from behind. Hey, we're used to it. Here's a check swing, appeal to first, and Triolo went around. So Triolo strikes out on a check swing. Two down. And that'll bring up Joey Bart making his debut here for the Pirates. That's the first strikeout for Wells today. Spencer Strider has got UCL damage. Didn't Yuri Perez just go down for the season? Jesus Christ, there is a crisis amongst, uh, you know, Pitching, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, you know, the, the health of these pitchers and, and, the, and the strain they're putting on their arms. 0-1 on Bart. Here's a high fly ball to left. I was worried he wanted to make a first impression, and he has. Joey Bart, in his first at-bat as a pirate, has just gone deep to left field with a two-run homer, and the Pirates have taken... A 3 nothing lead. I, I just had a feeling. Joey Bart, again, he was a huge prospect coming in through the Giants organization. Thought to be the replacement catcher for Buster Posey for years to come. Things just didn't work out. The Giants finally let him go. The Pirates scooped him up. He's here to make his first start, and there it is. First at-bat, two-run jack. And first pitch here is hit hard in the center, but right at Mullins for out number three. My goodness. That was a tough one. Now we're down three, just like that after two innings. A three spot for Pittsburgh, capped off by a two-run homer from Joey Bart, who I'm sure is making fast friends in the Pittsburgh clubhouse. We go to the third. It's Pittsburgh three, the Orioles nothing. Shane Bieber also. Well, Bieber's been, Bieber hasn't been active yet in the, during the, the season, right? Hasn't he been on the shelf? Jesus Christ, three runs. Yeah, that was painful. That was painful. All I wanted to see was Tyler Wells, you know, like just uh, hone in there and get through those first couple of innings without uh, doing what he did last time, but pretty much a repeat of last time. We just got to hope that's his one bad inning and he can throw another three or four shutdown innings and give us a chance to get back in the game. But – uh, he could give up just one run at this point. If, until we do something with our offense, it doesn't really matter. One run is enough for our opponent. We got no hits, no walks, no nothing through the first two innings. We're sending up the bottom of the order. It'll be Cedric Mullins, Brian or James McCann. I always want to say Brian McCann. And Jorge Mateo. That's who's due up. And if we get anybody on base, Gunner will come up. 
man, I just, I wish I, I mean, the, the, the only reason I didn't do it is because, you know, I'm sitting here rooting for the Orioles. I'm not about the broadcast that I'm sensing a Joey Bart home run, but boy, did I feel that home run coming. Here's the first pitch to Mullins outside for ball one. Mullins had a home run yesterday, one of three solo shots for the Orioles, his second of the season. His average is still, you know, in the uh, low 200s, I believe, but uh, he's had a few big hits already in the early going. This one's fouled back one and one. Hey there, Don C. Trolls? What trolls? I'm not aware of any trolls. The 1-1 one, one is outside. That was a curveball. 2-1 and one the count. To the leadoff man here in the third. Come on, we need to get Mullins on base. Leading off. Let's go. This falter guy is not that good. Come on. This one is on the outside edge. Mullins takes two balls and two strikes. I demand a base runner. I'm not going to have to whip out the bugle. Grounded right to O'Neill Cruz, who is shaded toward the second base bag, and he throws to first in time to retire Mullins. So one up, one down. Seven up, seven down so far for Bailey Falter, who once again, uh, by all metrics, by all statistics, is not supposed to be very good. You wouldn't know it so far. Hey there, Mabel. How you doing, hon? Welcome in. Welcome in. Take your perch and let's uh, see these Orioles try to fight from another come from behind situation. James McCann at the plate, one and no to him. And the next pitch is upstairs. Two balls, no strikes. McCann, the hero, the hero with the walk off two, two run single. I am. Oh. All right, folks. Unique New York. Unique New York. Fouled back two and one by James McCann. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. Rubber baby buggy bumpers. She, she sells, she sells by the seashore. Oh, I'm screwed. I'm absolutely screwed. I thought I had enough sleep. Two and one the count. Base is empty, one down. Top of the third. The pitch is whoa McCann lost the bat on that swing not sure if that was a miss or a foul ball because I was too busy watching the bat go a different direction so the bat goes flying two and two the count on James McCann the pitch is swung on, grounded a third. And McCann will be retired five to three. My goodness. Eight up, eight down on 31 pitches. So Falter averaging less than four pitches per batter. This is just, what are we doing here? What are we doing? Wake up. Hello? Er, er, er. I'm up. It's 3.40 in the morning. I'm up. Come on, boys. Here's a swing and a foul back by Mateo. 0-1 on him. Two down, nobody on. Top of the third. The Orioles, three runs down and still looking for their first base runner in this ballgame. And the umpire jumps up and Mateo had called for time here. Hey, Spooky. How you doing? The 01 
is tapped foul off to the left. And now Mateo in the hole 0-2. My goodness. Just can't square up a baseball against this guy. I will sit here and tell you how impressive he is with his command and his location, uh, mixing of pitches, but uh, this looks like hittable stuff to me. I don't know. I'm not a major leaguer. Who am I to say? I'll just say this. If I saw these pitches while I'm playing the show, it would be like 5 nothing right now. But what do I know? The 0-2 pitch, two down to Mateo, is swung on and fouled back. Still 0-2. Hey, thanks, DK1. This one's lifted in the air. Left field. Room out there, though. And the catch is made to win the inning. So Mateo flies out. The Orioles have spent one-third of this game doing absolutely nothing at the plate. Nine up, nine down. We head to the middle, uh, the bottom of the third. The Pirates lead this one three to nothing. And they're sending up the top of their order. My goodness. Oh, boy. All right. I don't, I you know, normally you don't play the, the charge horn until, you know, there's at least some semblance of a rally going on. Maybe, a, maybe we get a 2-0 count and we get excited. Maybe that first blue pit to start the inning, we get a, we get excited. But I mean, what are we, what are we charging right now? What are we charging? I don't know, but I'm going to give it a try here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get everybody pumped here. Let's see. This is working. Come on. Wake up. My goodness. All right. That'll be on standby. Uh, for crying out loud. Subscribe. He won't annoy you much. Hey, what a ringing endorsement. Hey, I won't annoy you much. <laughs> Folks, I'd love to have you here. I want to, uh, you know, do a good job and uh, give you a reason to want to keep coming back. Believe me, that's what I want to do. It's not just about me. It's about everybody coming together, having a place to hang out during a ball game, chat, interactive experience. That's what it's all about. I'm going to try to call the game as best I can for you. O'Neill Cruz is up now, and the first pitch is off the plate. I want to know. Here's the next one, and it's hit through the hole between second and short. O'Neill Cruz reaches with a leadoff single. My goodness, here come the Pirates. Hey, buddy. David, we need a couple good innings from Wells. Well, so far... Not off to the hottest start here in the uh, bottom of the third. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Folks, don't uh, give the mods too hard of a time. If they, uh, you know, just come in. They're here to, you know, help the channel grow. That's what it's all about. We're all working together here. Sean the Whip Whipple is also our beat uh, uh, minor league reporter. Lizzie here is our uh, social media marketing expert. O'Neill Cruz takes off, and unfortunately, Rutschman on the transfer drops the ball, and Cruz will steal second without a throw. Strike two on Reynolds on that pitch, but now the Pirates, a runner at second base and nobody out with their big hitters coming up. The 0-2 to Reynolds is low for ball one. Yeah, we need Bradish back. 
Thank you, Mabel. Yeah, I'm sure the more this goes on, the more comfortable I'll get. I mean, really, honestly, the tough thing is is April for me because of all of these weird, you know, late afternoon start times. It's just for me the toughest ones to do. Two and two the count now on Reynolds. But, uh, you know, I'm all in. And I hope you guys can feel it, that I'm all in. If there's anything that earns a like or a sub, that's that's it. I'm all in. All right, this one's low and in on Reynolds, and Wells works the count full. Still nobody out. Runner at second. Pittsburgh had just scored three runs in their previous trip to the plate. The payoff pitch is low for ball four. My goodness. Oof. Oof. Coffee, Mabel, I might need more than coffee. I might need a cattle prod. Because uh, right now the chips are down. The chips are down. And again, folks, if you want that even keel uh, announcer that uh, is going to sit there and just have a nice steady emotionless call of a game well i'm sure that's out there available for you but when things are looking bad it's hard for me not to express it two on nobody out and the first pitch to joe is fouled off to the left connor joe that is joe is 0 for 1 so far Wells has two runners on and nobody out. Oh, my goodness. We need a double play ball like nobody's business. The 0-1 pitch upstairs, 1-1. One one. Mabel's going to stick with me all season. You know what, Mabel? You keep talking like that, I'm going to have to make you a mod too. <laughs> All right, the 1-1 one, one to Joe is in there. Wells catches the outside edge knee high. One ball and two strikes on Joe. We need a strikeout or a double play here. We can't afford to be giving up more runs. Come on, Tyler. He steps off the rubber here. He looks, his body language is not healthy right now. He looks frustrated out there. It has to be said. Back to the stretch. And the one-two pitch is swung on and missed. Foul tip, strikeout. Joe goes back to the dugout. So th we needed that. There is the first out of the inning. Runners at first and second. And that will bring up the left-handed Jake Sawinski. Mm, excuse me. Well, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise, Kaiser. Uh, they got to play the Marlins already, and uh, they're the only winless team in the league. So is it that the Pirates are that good or the Marlins are that bad? Well, considering we beat Pittsburgh on their home opener, and I think the other two wins that Pittsburgh got were against the Nationals, who people have pretty much expected to win or uh, to finish last in the NL East. So, you know, you got to go out there and win games. I'm not taking away the fact they came in with a solid record before this series, but uh, same thing could be said about the Orioles, although when the Angels series uh, was underway and we got ahead of them with two giant wins, I was like, wow, this team is not good. But they've since won four games in a row. Here's the 0-2 pitch to Sawinski. And that is another strikeout. A curve ball from Wells. Back-to-back -back Ks after giving up two base runners to begin the inning. Is this the moment Wells finds that happy zone and starts mowing guys down? The pitch count is still in decent control here. 45 pitches with two out in the third. And here's Olivares now. Two down. The pitch. Swing and a miss. And a good located fastball there. About an inch off the outside corner. 
Olivares doubled and scored in that three-run rally an inning ago. Up here for the second time in as many innings. Two down here. The 0-1 pitch is inside. Yeah, two big strikeouts there for Wells. Let's see if he can uh, shut the door here. <laughs> Are my am my uh, people gonna get along in chat? I'm not sure. This one's fouled back. One and two, the count. Cruz apparently was running. Were they running on that pitch? Indeed. Both runners w took off on that last pitch. It was fouled away. Luckily, the 1 2 pitch to Oliveras popped up foul. Is it in play? McCann throws off the mask and makes the catch. It appeared McCann wasn't sure where that ball was at first. But it's a pop out foul to the catcher, and Wells escapes damage after giving up those first two base runners. We go to the fourth inning. It's 3 nothing Pirates. Top of the order, due up for the Birds, looking for their first anything at the play today. Don C says, not to be a pig, but Melanie Newman, the play-by-play -play person for the game, is gorgeous. Sorry, Steve. Uh, yeah, I'm no Melanie Newman. Never claimed to be. But I'm a charming man. I'm a very charming man. What's that? Is this what? <laughs> Mabel. Now is Mabel upset by something? We're throwing around the a hole. Who who's the a hole here? Can't we all just get along? Steve loves the kiss asses. What? L Lizzie, what's going on? Who's kissing my ass? Lizzie. First of all, the theory doesn't even make sense. Like, when you're on, on a stream with me, I spend, like, half of my time engaging you and you alone. So, if it's about me only uh, sort of acknowledging people that kiss my ass, you're not kissing my ass. You're, you're constantly... Uh, throwing shade my way and we have fun doing it so what's the problem what, what are you talking about i have no idea what you're talking about lizzie are you, are you just not in a good mood it's understandable if you're not in a good mood it's understandable but you know you don't have to spread it to everybody here nobody's doing you wrong here i don't know i see no evidence of anyone doing you wrong here lizzie and uh, i'm not trying to lecture you so don't take it as a lecture. I'm doing my best to try to de-escalate the situation. Let's all have a little bit of fun, okay? All right, top of the fourth we go. Gunner's leading off, and the first pitch to him is outside for ball one. Bailey Falter, perfect through the first three innings, second time through the order now. This one's popped up. Should be playable. Right center field. The center fielder is going to make the play about two feet in front of the track. Almost the same spot Gunner flew out to in his first at bat. Relatively deep, but just couldn't quite barrel it up. One down here in the top of the fourth. Ten up, ten down in the game for the Orioles. Spooky is an BW ass kisser and he's proud of it <laughs> ignore the negativity no it's just that you know lizzie and i have had a lot of exchanges uh since uh, she found my other channel you know i'm not treating lizzie just like as some uh you know a rando that showed up to you know rain on everybody's parade lizzie's a good egg i think lizzie's just not in the best mood I'm just telling Lizzie, you know, hey, we're just here chilling. Nobody's after you. Rutschman's at the plate, and after taking a first pitch ball, he swings and misses on a slider. One and one the count. The 
The 1-1 one, one to Rutschman is hit hard to the left side, but foul. Foul by about 10 feet. I got, I got excited about a ball that I would normally just go, oh, there's a foul ball, but it was hit kind of hard, so I got excited. Wow, the ball boy down there, hefty fella, made a leaping grab attempt, and the uh, announcers are giving him a little bit of jocular humor right now. This one's upstairs now to Adley, count two and two. One down, bases empty, as they have been so far all day today. And a 2-2 count on Rutschman. The pitch. That's hit hard, but also out in front and foul. Okay, Adley, come on. I'm expecting Adley to do something in this at-bat. And I can see right here, this is going to be a long at-bat. I don't want to see this. I'm getting rid of this uh, stuff for this at-bat because I got a feeling. You know what? I got a feeling. The next pitch is inside, 3-2. and two. Every time I take off the animation, it's been normally working to good effect. Normally. Ryan Mountcastle on deck. The 3-2 is inside for ball four. What do I tell you? What did I tell you? Adley reaches the first base runner of the game. And you know what? I am a uh, superstitious guy. This animation thing that's just above uh, the scoreboard here on the screen... We ain't looking at that for the rest of the game. Sorry. You can see uh, this. You can see this. And you can see up here. <laughs> okay. Hey, Pierre, how you doing? Mountcastle at the plate now. Adley on base. First pitch is swung on him. Foul back. Straight back. Hitting off that uh, stone facade there. at the Right behind the, uh, the plate there. What do you call that? Like terracotta? I don't know. Not my forte. Not my tempo. Owen won the count on Mountcastle. And the next pitch is swung on and missed. Falter with a pitch in on the hands, probably about an inch inside. Mountcastle dialed up but came up empty. 0-2 oh, on him now. Oh, come on. Can we do something behind 0-2? Oh, come on. We got to keep the momentum. We got one base runner. Let's go. This one's hit on the ground. It's a double play ball. But it's booted. It's absolutely booted at second base. I mean, that ball was hit straight at him. He was just waiting with the glove down to... I don't know what happened. I can't wait to see the replay. Did he just lift the glove up at the last second? Wow, the Orioles catch a huge break here. That was a tailor-made double play ball, and it does hit off the edge of the webbing of his glove. That is a potential huge mistake. We got to capitalize. Two on, one out for Santander. And he swings and laces one, but right at second base. The same second baseman. Uh, what's his name? This kid, Williams. Again, he's only had eight at-bats coming into the game. He's a, sort of a bench backup player getting a start today. Don't know much about the kid. But uh, just after making the error, he's able to catch a soft liner for the second out of the inning. So two down now, and it's going to be up to Jordan Westberg to do something here. First pitch to him, and why did that come up? I don't want to see that. God damn it. I want to know the count. That pitch is off the plate. Westberg's hitting just 174. Wow, the Orioles, after that great start, a lot of average there, a lot of averages in this lineup below 200 right now. The 1 0 count is hit in the air. Looked good off the bat, but it's to straightaway center and a lot of room out there. About 10 feet in front of the track, the center fielder will make the catch, and the inning is over. The Orioles finally get some runners on base, but they're unable to cash in. But I guess that is some sort of a step forward. Maybe we don't score this inning, but it's a sign that we can at least 
Get runners on base? Silver linings? Anybody? Anybody? Jesus Christ. Whew. I tell you what. All right, why not? Charge. Charge. Yeah, I, I need a beer too. Hey, Raphael. Hey, let's just start handing out some beers. Oh, don't worry, Raphael. The fact that you spelled beer wrong or made a typo lets me know that you're probably already on your third, maybe fourth. But that's all good. That's all good. Just make sure you keep it cold. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my goodness. Bottom of the fourth coming up. The Orioles still don't have a hit, by the way. So it was a two walks? And it was a walk and a what? How did the other guy... How did... Uh, House. There is now Rutschman a larger walked. and improved dining room and lounge space, an upgraded regeneration room. Oh, oh new meeting the error, of course, the double staff, play ball that was an error. Staff lockers, okay. and finally a rework so, yeah, we don't have a hit. <laughs> we still don't have a hit. Ben Charrington and Travis hey, Williams Pure, yeah, uh, we got that report in uh, someone else delivered. David making uh, the Spencer Strider news. And this is what, 24 hours, maybe 48 hours after the Yuri Perez news? And certainly walking I around, think I baseball, everything looks and very this nice. is not a it new a topic, by the way, on and I'm not the first one to Greg. bring first it up, class, but I certainly, down. when I heard it being brought up maybe a year jealous. ago for the first time, Tellez, RBI, single uh, the yeah, we got to do something virus. to start taking care of these arms. Uh, they're just getting... They're just getting blown That's out right. with, with too much regularity. Okay, we're underway here in the bottom of the fourth. Rowdy Telez at the plate. And after missing one pitch, the next one evens up the count at one and one. Here's a foul, oh, foul oh, ball off to the right. <laughs> now there's competition. Over there by the ball the girl who's upset that she <laughs> didn't make the play on the fly. That's okay, ball girl. You still kept it in front of you. You know, it's cold, it's early in the season. <laughs> it's kind of slippery sometimes. You know? That might actually make the highlights. Cute little reaction <laughs> there. Telez reaches out on a again, pitch yeah. off the plate Tellez. and just serves Super it into two. center field for a base hit. I mean, this guy looks like a okay, freaking uh, linebacker. Uh, I don't know. He's too tall to be a linebacker. Just I don't know. A change what is up. He? Stays on the changeup. The guy is built like a, a brick you kids out there, poop house. Two strikes. Get yourself in a good hit and yet position. he's just serving a ball in the center, center like he's Rod Carew. Exactly right I mean, can off. we catch a break here? Lead off man on again for the Pirates. Oh, sorry, the TV, right, because I played the bugle. I'm, so, You know what? That's it for the bugle. <laughs> God, I can't remember to keep turning that on and off. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Jared Triolo, the batter now. 0-1 oh, the count on him. Runner at first, nobody out. Pittsburgh up by three. This one's foul back, 0-2. Oh, Whew. Yep, every time I go with a play the bugle, I unmute my desktop sound so you can hear it. But by doing that, I've got a HDMI cable plugged into my uh, TV screen to have the game on this monitor. Here's a ground ball to third. This could be a double play and safe at first is the call. Triolo will wind, wind up with a fielder's choice. Close play there. like to see a replay just to make sure you made it. And he did. As long as that foot is on the bag, right? Yeah, he's there. Okay, one out, and after the fielder's choice, that'll bring up Joey Bart. Bart, in his Pittsburgh career, is batting a thousand with a home run in every at bat he's ever had for him. That's not a bad, 
you know, if, if I were him, I would just I would just leave. I'd be like, you know what? I'm done. I want to end my career with a uh, slugging percentage of 4,000. First pitch to him is off the plate, 1-0. and Last year, he hit just 207 with an OPS of just 528, no home runs, and limited action. So, yeah, he really fell off a cliff. But new environment, new team, new chance. A player with his uh, pedigree, his background, you know, he was a big prospect. Guy like this could totally turn his career around with a, with a new chance. Here's the 1-0 to him. And this one's hit hard again. Left field. It's sending back Hayes. It's going to bounce off the base of the wall. And the runner, the lead runner will be held at third base. My goodness. A double. Joey Bart has six bases and two at-bats. Second and third now only one out. My goodness. This is, ugh. This is getting ugly. Oof. This is getting ugly. This is like waking up to someone you met the night before and realizing what the hell happened. This, this is ugly. Come on. One down, second and third. And now it's Williams, the number nine hitter. Can we possibly uh, do something with this guy? Alika Williams. Okay, I won't forget it going forward. Alika. I, I might need to take Alika between innings. This one's low. 2-0 and o the count. Great. We've fallen behind the number nine hitter with runners at second and third down three runs. That's always a good sign. The infield is in. The 2-0. Swing and a miss. All right. Let's build off of that. Let's build off a of swing and a miss. 2-1. and one. Wells from the stretch, one second left on that pitch clock, and he finally lets go of the ball, and it's outside. Now three and one on Alika Williams. O'Neill Cruz is on deck. Who would you rather, you know, try to get out right now, Alika Williams or O'Neill Cruz? Come on, the three-one, right down the middle of the plate, and Williams pops it straight up. Mountcastle comes charging in about two feet from home plate. McCann was there to make the catch. It was his ball in terms of proximity. But Mountcastle came charging in to make that catch. So a huge second out, keeping the runners where they are at second and third. And can Wells somehow tiptoe his way out of trouble here? Again, after that three spot, we really can't afford another rally here from the Pirates. And out comes the pitching coach now to have a little bit of a chat. There is a base open. There is a, there is a reason to consider to pitch around Cruz here. I mean, he's already got a base hit today. He's hitting 353, three hits yesterday. Brian Reynolds on deck, hitting 278. That's not shabby. But Cruz is a natural lefty against the righty Wells. I don't know if he's going to say just straight up put him on, but it might be a don't give him anything in the zone. If he chases, maybe try to get him out. Otherwise, go after the next guy. That would be my best guess about that conversation, which is now just ended. Cruz is in the batter's box. Wells is in the stretch. Two out, second and third. The pitch upstairs for ball one. Well, if he's not going to throw into the zone, that was a pretty good indication. 
because that was nowhere near. The 1 0 in there called strike. Cruz kept the bat on his shoulders, and that pitch was right down the middle. One ball, one strike, two down. The pitch inside, 93 miles an hour. Wells' pitch count is starting to creep up, 66 here in the fourth. The 2-1 is spiked in the dirt, 3-1. and 3-1. Come on, Orioles. You can't. The, the good thing is, uh, there's no reason to ever give up on the Orioles. There's no reason. I mean, you guys remember the game with, against the Royals, right? One hit going into the eighth inning. Here's a ground ball to second. Scooped up by Mateo, throws to first in time, and the Orioles escape the jam somehow. Second and third, only one out and they get out of the inning. Will that give us some momentum? I don't know, but we're going to the fifth. It's the Pirates three, the Orioles nothing. Hey there, Charles. How you doing? Your beloved O's. I love them too, but man, is it tough. It's tough love today here in game two, hoping to maybe take the series here and go for the sweep tomorrow. That was the hope, you know, get that series clinch out of the way. And then uh, whether you win or lose the next day, it's all gravy, right? Well, we got work to do. We got work to do, and we've got uh, five innings left to do it. Fifteen outs to play with at the plate. You hear the TV again? Now, that should not be the case. Yeah, no, you don't hear the TV. You do not hear the TV. You may have voices in your head, though, which I can understand. I do, too. Probably very little in terms of updated tweets out of uh, Orioles Twitter, considering, uh, you know, the kids got to play in the snow, so they are calling it, are, we, are they talking about, yeah, I thought they were going to talk about that Pittsburgh game. How has the defense been? How did the Pirates score? Uh, let's see, Austin Hayes made a nice diving catch early in the game. Uh, otherwise, yeah, the defense on our end has been uh, f fine, adequate. Uh, but we can't uh, buy a hit. We do not have a hit yet. The Pirates scored with a RBI single and a two-run homer all happening in the second inning. Two-run homer by Joey Bart in his first at-bat as a Pittsburgh Pirate. All right, here we go. Top of the fifth, and the first pitch to Austin Hayes is upstairs. And the next one is off, off the plate as well. 2-0 and oh the count on Austin Hayes. Come on, 2-0 -oh count. Let's go. Lead-off hitter, 2-0 -oh count, and a swing and a foul at the plate, 2-1. and one. Oh, trying to make sense out of chat is uh, pretty much impossible for me. I, I, I realized that very early on in the history of this channel. I'm going to do my best. I want to interact with you guys. If you, got, if you guys really want to get a word across to me, instead of just sort of chatting amongst yourselves, just put that BW in there in capital letters. My eyes will catch it better. Three and one the count now on Hayes. Come on. Hitters count. 
leading off the top of the fifth. The pitch. Upstairs. What? No, a late called strike. That ball was high. You shitty umpire. Three, four inches above the zone. A walk taken away and now a 3-2 count on Hayes. And if he doesn't get on base, I'm about to go ape. He hits it hard, but right to center fielder. Sawinski for the catch. So Hayes retired after having a walk taken away from him by the umpire. A leadoff walk at that. What are we supposed to do? Oh, that really gets into my crawl. I mean, that was not a strike in anybody's book. Even Angel Hernandez is blushing. Here's Mullins. First pitch is off the plate outside. Are you sure, ump? Are you sure? Want to know on Mullins. And your boy is feeling agitated right now, but he's going to get through it. He's going to power through. Next pitch is foul back, one and one. Still plenty of time to go in the game. Eventually, falter will falter, right? I mean, the guy's name is falter. Could you go ahead and falter now? This one's low and away. (laughs) Two and one to count on Mullins. Yeah, the strike challenge rule, we we certainly would have utilized it right there, Sean, because, again, I mean, it's such a huge call in that spot. We're sitting here trying to just get some kind of momentum going, and he takes a leadoff base runner away, the umpire did. Three and one, the count on Mullins. And think about it. Right now, there could be a runner at first, nobody out, and a 3-1 count. Instead, the bases are empty. There's an out already in the inning. Popped up. Again, center field. Sawinski, busy out there today, makes the catch. Two down. I mean, no hits yet? We were almost through this order twice. Bailey Falter? Folks, I'm about to bring up Pittsburgh Twitter because I want you to see what their own fan base thinks about Bailey Falter when they're uh, when they put their lineup out today. Here's McCann. This one's hit on the ground and scooped up by the third baseman. A bit of a bobble, but he has time to recover. And the Orioles are retired. One, two, three. We are halfway through this game. It's the Pirates three. The Orioles nothing. Yeah, let's take a look at uh, sort of what the pirate fan base thinks about a guy who has thrown five innings of no-hit ball. Uh, let's see. Hopefully the offense can score a lot of runs since Bailey Falter is pitching. Yeah. What else? I'm just looking for anything mentioning Bailey Falter. Uh, well, apparently he's not getting a whole lot. Bailey Falter, God luck. Are they trying to lose? Falter is pitching, so we'll need to score double figures. Really? Are you sure? Okay, there's one person with a little bit of faith. Of course, nobody liked. You know what? I'm going to like that. Because you called it, sir or ma'am. Hopefully they can bounce back. But with Bailey, it scares me. Bailey Falter. Going to crack the beer open early today. Implying, oh boy, I better get drunk. Because this guy's on the mound. Bailey Falter, bro, it's going to be tough. Do you see a pattern here, folks? 
<sighs> Frustrating. Because we just had, we, we faced that Marsh kid from Kansas City. And we sit there and watch him pitch uh, the best game of his major league career. And now, now we got to sit here and watch it happen to another nobody. No offense. But, uh, you know. Five innings of no hit ball. Are you, I, 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 pfft. bottom of the fifth. Not sure, Lizzie. You kind of went away for a while, though. I guess just uh, hang around and wait and see. Yeah, there is a there is a topic we can talk about maybe between the next inning, but we're about to get started here in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, the the A's and that whole. There's another terrible one. Here's a fly ball down in the left field corner, and Hayes is gonna make the catch. That ball. Got all the way down near the 315 foot marker at the left field foul pole. Hayes making the catch down there in the corner for out number one. What's for dinner tonight, Lizzie? Connor Joe at the plate. First pitch to him is a called strike. Joe is 0 for 2, but having a good start, 321 average still, OPS over 1,000. Next pitch has popped up. Joe slams the bat down. He knows it's an easy out. In shallow left field, Gunnar Henderson goes out to make the catch. Two away here, as Wells looks for a clean inning, a rare clean inning, as Jake Sawinski will now come to the plate. Two down, nobody on in the bottom of the fifth. Sloppy Joe, sloppy, sloppy Joe, yeah. First pitch to Sawinski is a breaking ball on the outside edge for a called strike. Come on, Wellsy. He's on 72 pitches now. He could pitch the sixth if he wanted to, if he, as long as he gets uh, Sawinski here. That's foul back, and it's two strikes. So this could be another occasion where another Orioles starter gets into trouble early, and the team falls behind, but it winds up being a six-inning quality start, and the Orioles figure out a way to come back. The 0-2 to Sawinski. Swung on and drilled. Right field, but... And hangs up there near the track. Santander makes the catch. Hit hard, but right to Santander, who was playing deep, and the inning is over. We go to the sixth. It's Pittsburgh three, the Orioles nothing. Okay, this time we're getting a bugle charge, and I'm not going to forget to un or hit the mute button back when I'm done. Come on, people. What? Charge! How's that for some ASMR? Mm. All right. There's the mute button. Didn't forget this time. Hey, Melanie, when did you get here, hon? I haven't seen you during the whole chat. Jordy, card, come on, people. Let's go. I know it's a little cheesy, but it's been working. We've already had two walk-off wins in the season, and I think three of the five wins have been come from behind. So we're not in any position we're not used to right now. But, man, we need a hit, a hit off of Bailey Falter. That's all we're asking for here. A hit off of nobody. 
I mean, just a bloop. A Baltimore chop. While doing your makeup. Uh-oh. Big night out on the town tonight there? Melanie, what are you doing in town tonight? Oh, my. Suddenly, Lizzie's making f uh, friends really fast. All right. Well, it's a new side of Lizzie in chat now. <laughs> Owen won the count on Jorge Mateo as he fouls off the first pitch here in the top of the sixth. Bailey Falter has been, uh, well, perfect pretty much. One walk, that's it. And only one strikeout through five innings. So he's not blowing anybody away. We just can't square up a baseball to save our lives. One and one the count on Mateo. And it goes back to what Sean was saying. I mean, this guy doesn't exactly throw hard heat. Maybe we just can't do it against soft tossers. This one is foul back. I mean, his fastball tops out at like 92. Mateo flew out back in the third. Just his second at bat of the game here in the sixth inning leading off. The pitch is check swing. I swear. Okay. Okay. Not even an appeal because that pitch was way low and inside. Two and two the count. Mateo leading it off in the top of the sixth. And this one is lifted foul off to the right and we'll do it again. Oh, great. Now we're... Are, are, are people hooking up in chat now? Great. Now my chat is going to turn into a, an eyes wide shut party. This one's fouled off to the left. Two and two the count. The password, everyone, is Fidelio, okay? Just letting everyone know the password is Fidelio. Two and two on the leadoff man, Mateo. The pitch... Hit in the air, weakly, shallow center. The second baseman is going to be called. Oh, it drops in. Unbelievable. Mateo hustling in to second base. Is this the break we needed? And will it go down as a hit because nobody touched the ball? That ball was up in the air forever. The center fielder trotting in, the second baseman racing out. It should have been the center fielder's ball all the way. But in the end, the second baseman backed off. And that's his second huge mistake in this game. I mean, you can blame both fielders, really. Because the center fielder should have been calling him off. But the second baseman really made the gesture as if to say, I got this. And then at the last second, just pulled up. Expecting uh, Sawinski, the center fielder, to make the catch. So now we've got a runner in scoring position. Nobody out. And does that count as a hit? Does that count as a hit? Yes! The Orioles are in the hit column. And we got the top of the order up. Let's go! This is where we come back. Gunner at the plate. First pitch is a called strike. Let's go. Come on, chat. This is where we do this normal thing like we do every stream where things start off kind of low. I'm in the dumps. I'm kind of monotone. And then a spark. The spark is happening now. The 0-1 to Gunner. Swung on and missed. 0-2. Ugh. Come on, Gunner. Falter has just one strikeout today. Do not tell me he gets number two right here. Skull! And the 0-2 to Gunner. Falter staring down the, sec the runner at second. Popped up. 
in play in the foul ground. Telez makes the catch, one down. God, you got to be kidding me. With nobody out and the speed of Mateo at second, we can't figure out a way to just get him to third. With and That way he could score on a sack fly or something. And at least we get a run on the board. Now we gotta. Now we need hits. I mean, we're gonna need hits. Rutschman's at the plate now. Come on, man. They gifted us a double. We gotta take advantage. First pitch to Rutschman's right in there for a called strike. Orioles magic. I mean, I don't know. What kind of Houdini stunt that was having that ball drop in for us, but we got it we gotta capitalize. This one's outside. One and one on Adley Rutschman. 0 for one with a walk. He was the first person to reach base in this game, walking back in the fourth. Average at three thirty three, still looking for his first home run of the season. The pitch. Is swung on and popped up. Shallow right field. The second baseman going out. Makes a basket catch. So after a couple of blunders in the field, Williams, Alika Williams, makes a pretty athletic play there, running with his back to the infield and making a, an over-the-shoulder basket catch on that ball to shallow right center field. So now there's two out in the inning. And Mateo, who began the inning at second base and nobody out, is still there. Here's Mountcastle. And it's not just getting a guy like... It's not just having a runner at second base and nobody out. It's the fact that it was a gift. It's the fact that we have our fastest player at second, making it easier for him than anyone else to score. And then it's the fact that we sent we send up Gunner, Adley, and Mountcastle to drive them in. And we're two-thirds of the way through. Come on. Come on, Ryan. The 0-1 pitch is swung on and fouled back. I mean, we've we've been given everything on a plate in this inning to break through. Got the hitters you want up there, got the guy on base you want running. Got a little bit of help from the Pittsburgh defense. The 0-2 to Mountcastle. Hit on the ground, right side. Telez backhands, and the momentum will take him straight to the bag. And the inning is over. <laughs> Bailey Falter, a guy who got... Beat up by the Marlins, the winless Marlins, five days ago or whatever it was, has now thrown six shutout innings of one-hit ball. Who is he, Sandy Koufax? Let me just check that I'm reading the name wrong. Does that say Bob Feller or Bailey Falter? That's not Bob Feller, right? Okay, just making sure. This isn't Mickey Lolich. Jesus Christ. What inning are we in, PTBW? Uh, all info is on the screen. Middle of the sixth. Middle of the sixth. We're heading into the bottom of the sixth. Wells is on 74 pitches. I mean... The pitch count would lead you to think he could go another inning, although with Wells and his innings limit, eh, I didn't, they didn't show anybody getting up in the pen during uh, the last half inning. My expectation is he's going to be out there to start the sixth. I love this win probability nonsense. It's so It's so meaningless. All right, bottom of the sixth we go. And you know what? Your boy, Steve, your boy, the bird watcher, might need to take his sponsor break. This half inning brought to you by Lucky Strike. 
When the mood strikes, reach for a lucky. Four out of five doctors prefer lucky strike. They're toasted. All right, bottom of the sixth we go. Wells is indeed out there, and the first pitch is a curveball in there for a called strike to Edward Olivares. Olivares. Had a uh, double back in the second. This one is off the plate, low and outside. One and one. You say situational hitting, RC, but that's precisely what we had in the last inning. We had a runner at second, nobody out. You play fundamental baseball, Gunner should have done something to at least get him to third, and then we have a chance with Adley to drive him in without a hit. We can't, we've got one hit, and yet we still had a way to get that hit in without the benefit of another, and we couldn't do it. The 2-1 pitch is outside, 3-1. and one. So, yeah, we're not playing the fundamental baseball uh, that we're, uh, you know, usually playing. And that's what gets me frustrated because when we play, when we play our brand of baseball, it's, uh, you know, it's fantastic. We figure out ways to get runs on the board. Three and two the count now on Olivares leading off the bottom of the sixth. And the payoff pitch is swung on and grounded to short. Gunner has it over to Mountcastle, and there's one down. I am not latte Steve today. I am apple-flavored Red Bull Steve. There's my sponsor for today. Apple-flavored Red Bull for when you're running a YouTube stream at 4.38 in the morning. Rowdy Telez now on the plate. Telez with a couple of hits today already. Including an RBI single. Dylan Tate is up now in the Orioles bullpen. Went out here in the sixth. Wells trying to probably finish the inning out, but if he gets into trouble, we'll probably see Tate. This one's high, and the count 2-0 and on Telez. With those two hits so far today, his average is up to 300. This dude is built like me. I got to respect it. This pitch is over the plate, but just a little bit low, and now the count goes to 3-0. and Snacks? Who's got snacks? I, I need snacks. The 3-0 is inside on a four pitches. Wells issues a walk, and typically when you're near the end of the line, you throw a four-pitch walk, and that's pretty much an instant hook. Let's see. Let's see if uh, Wells gets hooked here. No, he's not. Triolo, another right-hander coming up, and with Joey Bart on deck, already two for two with a homer and the double. I got a feeling this is going to be Wells' last batter one way or another, so hopefully he can get a double play ball. This one's fouled back, 0-1 on Triolo. 0 for 2 with a strikeout so far today. 3 nothing Pirates in the bottom of the sixth. The Orioles... I've only found one hit today, and it wasn't exactly a hit. This one's low. One and one. That's right. It doesn't matter what uh, what the portion size of the cookies are. I'm going to eat them. The one one is on the ground and past the dive of the third baseman into left field for a base hit. So Triolo gets his first hit of the game. And again, I don't understand why Tyler Wells, after a four-pitch walk, is being left in the game. He's The pitch count is where you would expect a change. And he just gave up a four-pitch walk, and he kept him in there for another batter. And now you got Joey Bart coming up. And now Brandon Hyde comes out to make a change. This is one batter too late, in my opinion. But what do I know? Maybe Dylan Tate 
Didn't have enough time to get ready, but he really he should have been warming up before this inning, inning even started. Tate will come out to replace Wells. There's one out in the bottom of the sixth. Pittsburgh have two runners on, and we're heading to a break, and I'm about to go get my lucky strike because, good God almighty, has there been much to be excited about tonight? This has been tough. I'd rather watch Sophie's Choice on a loop. Come on. I forgot I'm supposed to take myself off camera while I do this because, you know, I'm not trying to, like, promote this sort of habit to the kids. But, you know, whatevs. Everybody's got to grow up at some point, right? Oh, boy. Hey, folks, come on back tomorrow. Whether we win or lose today, we've got a chance to either take or sweep the series tomorrow. Game three, I guess it's uh, Dean Kramer time, right? Dean Kramer should be on the mound. It should be his turn in the rotation. Come on back out here for Dino. I think it's a one, uh, either a 135 start. We'll, we'll take a look. Actually, let's see, game three, well, it's not showing the time. Maybe if I do this, what time is this? Oh, well, for me, it'll be at 12.35 a.m. So, yeah, 1.35 p.m. start time on Sunday, okay? So, do your Sunday thing. Go have your brunch at Golden Corral or whatever Awful Sunday tradition you got. And then come on back for the game. All right. Dylan Tate's out there. And with Joey Bart at the plate, that one's in there. I missed the first pitch. The count is one and one now on Joey Bart. Pitch inside. Two and one. Where are my glasses? I make you Jones. I don't know what that means, my friend. The 2-1 is on the outside corner, 2-2. Two and two. Oh, is there uh is the tournament on tomorrow during the during the afternoon? The 2-2 two -two pitch is hit in front of the catcher, and he's going to go to third base. Wait a minute, what happened? He dropped the ball. Wait a minute. Now, why is that an out? I'm not complaining. We get the out on the force at third. I guess because it's a force, the moment he caught the ball, Telez is out. But as Telez slid in, the ball became dislodged out of Westberg's glove. Actually, it slipped out of his glove because Telez's legs knocked out Westberg's legs. And honestly, Telez intentionally slid into Westberg. That should be like, honestly, like, I don't know what you do. Like, if it were hockey, he's in a penalty box. If it were football, it's a, uh, uh, what do you call it, a personal foul. What Telez did just then was Bush League. He intentionally slid into the feet of Westberg instead of trying to slide into the bag. That is that is gross. And not to mention Telez, Telez is like 260 pounds. And he's bringing his full force. 
I'm I'm upset. And right now there's a break in the action. I don't know what's going on. Telez might have been kicked out of the No, he's in the he's in the dugout because he's out, but there's a shot of him in the dugout looking like he's making a lot of noise. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy, but you better keep your trap shut. Apparently, the umpires are getting word. There's no violation after a review. What? There's no slide violation. And the Pittsburgh announcers go, yeah, I see no issue with that. You are so you are lying. <sighs> First and second, two down. I don't know what to think anymore. I mean, if uh, there is a, a replay of that play on Twitter, we'll look at it between the next inning so you guys can see what, what I saw. Oh, here's a pitch Tate tried to locate outside corner. Doesn't get the call. 2-0 and the count on Alika Williams, who's had a very interesting day in the field. Now he's up there with two on, and now a 3-0 count. Come on, Tate. I mean, there's one angle. If you're, there's one camera angle looking straight across at Telez sliding in, like right into your, right into your living room, and you can see his legs not going toward the base. They went right towards Westberg's legs. There's a strike. Three and one, the count. I'm telling you that that play really uh, gets under my skin. Here's a ground ball to short. Gunner will flip to second for the force. And the inning is over. Baltimore escape another jam. We're heading to the late innings here. We need some runs. We go to the seventh. It's Pittsburgh three, Baltimore nothing. And your boys go into Twitter now. I mean, I'm just going to type in Rowdy Telez and see what happens. I'm telling you right now what he did. Could have gotten Westberg injured, honestly. Uh, there you go. There, there is a, there is a, there, there's a still photo already. So there's a still photo for you. You see that? Like, he's he's coming like this, right? And then as he slides, like he had a direct path to just slide right on into this base with his feet. Instead, he. he it's like he's trying to break up a double play at second. Absolute garbage. I hope there's a full video of it. I hope there's a full video of it at some point. I am curious to see how a runner can violate the slide row if what Rowdy Telez just did was legal. I agree. Like, if there is a rule, then how is that not? Telez slid and took out Westberg's legs at third. Would have been a yellow card in soccer. Again, another good comp. Uh, again, in other sports, this would have been some kind of a penalty. I'm telling you. And he just got away with it. And it really pisses me off. Yeah, and especially considering the injury impact, the potential to Oh, here's a great one. You'll get another you'll get another heart from me on that one. Yeah, that is that is messed up. Like honestly, I don't know if the Orioles in the moment just didn't understand quite how egregious this was because I think if they did, our boys would have been out there on the field. Rowdy Telez is dirty. If you're an Orioles fan and mad at that Rowdy Telez slide, I suggest yeah. Well, why don't you yeah? Why don't you take a hike? 
All right, here we go. Uh, first pitch is a ball one now to Anthony Santander, leading off the top of the seventh. New pitcher in for the Pirates. It's a right-hander by the name of Ryan. And this one is foul back one and one. Ugh. Ryder Ryan. Three and a third innings so far on the season. This one's low. Two and one the count on Santander. Leading off the top of the seventh. Middle of the order up. He'll be followed by Jordan Westberg and Austin Hayes. Unless uh, we go to a pinch hitter. Now with a righty on the mound. And the righty's due up. Low and away. Three and one on Santander. Okay, we got a hitter's count. You know, brand new pitcher, you never know. You go get a new pitcher, and if you don't have it, maybe we can strike the 3-1. Outside ball four. <laughs> new pitcher comes in, first batter walks. Let's go. Let's go. Westberg. 0 for 2 today. Due for a hit. I say due for a hit. We're all due for a hit. Jesus Christ, we've got two. The pitch. Check swing, and he went. Home plate umpire making the call himself. Down to 167 is Westberg. Isaac, I said I said that joke like 10 minutes ago. Here's a fair ball down the left field line. Past the diving third baseman. Santander will go to third. It's a double. And the Orioles have something going. Second and third. Nobody out. Jordan Westberg with a huge double. Could this be the inning we finally get going? It really feels like uh like a black mirror episode doesn't it or the twilight zone or i don't know groundhog day like this is we we have seen this before this this feels familiar austin hayes is coming up and we're not going to pinch hit for him and this happened yet this we had this situation yesterday first pitched him as low Hayes, take another one, Hayes. Hayes, you know you're not hitting right now. Go ahead and let this guy keep throwing until he gives you strike one. That's my command. I command you to take a pitch until strike one. The 1-0. And he swings at a ball, hits softly to third, and it's going to be an RBI ground out. And a productive RBI ground up. Not only does the run come in, but the runner on second will now get to third with only one out. As that ball was hit slowly toward uh, the third base side of the infield. So a fielder's choice, or excuse me, not a fielder's choice, RBI ground out. And here's Cedric Mullins. One run in for the Orioles now. Three to one the score. And that second run now, 90 feet away, only one out. This one's low and in to Mullins, 1-0. Come on, boys. Come on. That second run is huge. Let's get him in. The 1-0. Hit hard, but foul. Mullins out in front. Ryan from the stretch, the 1-1 pitch, popped up, but hit maybe deep enough. The left fielder making the catch. Here comes the throw home. Here comes the runner, and he will slide in safely. The Orioles get their second run in the inning. It's now 3-2 as Wesper comes in on the sacrifice fly from Cedric Mullins. We got ourselves a ball game. 
We've got ourselves a ball game. All right, all right, all right. Two down, base is empty now. McCann at the plate, and his first pitch is a little bit inside for ball one. And why is this popping up? I don't want to see that part of the damn screen. Leave it alone. The 1 0 pitch. Foul back, 1 and 1. McCann over 2 with a pair of ground outs so far today. The 1 1 pitch. Hit in the air, shallow left center, the shortstop Cruz going out, making the catch, and the inning is over. But the Orioles finally find a little crack, and they make the most out of what they had. Two runs get on, and with a RBI ground out and a sacrifice fly, they both come in to score. We'll head to the bottom of the seventh. It's the Pirates 3, the Orioles 2. Woo! Wait, did I ever put myself back on the screen? No, I didn't. <laughs> you guys are like, Steve, are you still... Steve, you still having that uh, lucky? No, I finished like 20 minutes ago. I just forgot to put that back up. That just goes to show how important me being on camera is. I mean, if I can do this without me on, I can not worry about, you know. I could just roll out of bed. All right, maybe I look like I rolled out of bed all the, already. I don't know. Y you know, I could do this without pants on. There's options. All right, well, you know what? I need a reason to uh, go away again for a minute, so there. How you doing? I'll be back. All right. Hey, folks, if you're here watching right now, let's get a look at uh, the old uh, views here. 423 checked in 46 here right now. Hey, folks, let's go ahead and get a uh, like count uh, goal of 30. I don't know, six more people before we get to the end of this game. And if we come behind, come from behind to win, then we better pump that up to like 40. Call your friends, folks. Get them in on the stream because you know how I get in the late innings. You know how I get in the late innings. You want another memorable call from your boy, the bird watcher? Well, it's, it's waiting. It's waiting. I'm still waiting on a Telez video. I want a video of that play. By the way, the opponent for Dean Kramer tomorrow, Marco Gonzalez, another southpaw on the mound. So expect another day without Kowser in the lineup, although he ought to be. Maybe they'll get him in there. And then we got to, what, throw Mateo out there again? Ugh. All right, here we go. Keegan Aiken out on the mound now for the Orioles here to begin the bottom of the seventh with an 0-1 count on O'Neill Cruz. Next pitch is off the plate, 1-1. One one. Cruz 1 for 3 so far today. That one is in there, a ball and two strikes. Called strike three, Aiken, with a pitch that was pretty center in the zone, but for some reason, Cruz just let it go by, and he will go down looking. One away here in the bottom of the seventh. Action in the Pirate bullpen, a left-hander. I think that's probably a role to Chapman. And the next batter looks at a called strike one. This is Brian Reynolds stepping in, 0 for 2 with a walk. 
Aiken's next pitch is a swing and a miss. Nice fastball there. Outside corner, belt high. A little high this time, one and two the count. One out, nobody on in the bottom of the seventh. Pittsburgh ahead three to two. Upstairs, two and two. And this one catches the bottom of the zone. Aiken with his second punch out looking. And Reynolds not happy with the home plate umpire. According to the uh, strike zone up on the screen, that caught the bottom of the zone 92 miles an hour. So Aiken has come in and gotten the first two batters looking. Here's Connor Joe swinging a foul back 0-1. And why is this popping? Stop. I, I want it there. Why are you trying to make me look at something I don't want to see? I don't get it. That one's in there. 0-2. Oh Aiken in here throwing strikes. He is not messing around. 0-2 oh is tapped in front of the catcher. McCann picks it up. Throws to first. And Aiken... With a quick one, two, three inning, just what the doctor ordered, we go to the eighth. The Orioles, one run down, six outs to play with. Can we come from behind again? We're going to find out as we send up the nine, one, and two hitters. And look, if it's a righty out there, we're pinch hitting for Mateo. No doubt about it. Who do we want? We got. We can go with Kowser or we go with O'Hearn. I feel like you go Kowser. I feel like O'Hearn, you went up there with runners on base, not as a leadoff hitter. Kowser, a better choice for uh, – uh, no, they're going to bring in a lefty. Never mind. Chapman is going to come in. And it probably makes sense because would you rather have Kowser facing a righty or Mateo facing a role as Chapman? I don't even think it's a debate. So the veteran Chapman going to come in here to try and uh, be the bridge between the closer, David Bedner. Oh, boy. I don't want to see a lefty like Chapman in there. I don't want to see a lefty right now. I wanted to see a righty and a pinch hitter for Mateo. All right. But we got to take what we can get. You get dealt a hand, you play it. Mateo is going to lead off against Aroldis Chapman. Veteran reliever. Broke in with the Reds, I don't know how many years ago now. Made a lot of noise coming in, throwing triple digits with ease. Since then, it hasn't been as uh, rare of a feat. But, man, when he broke into the league, everybody was watching his stuff. All right, Mateo is stepping into the batter's box. The top of the eighth is underway. Chapman gets the sign. In the stretch, the first pitch is low and inside for ball one. 97 with a lot of movement. Luckily, Mateo wasn't even thinking about swinging at that one. Want to know the count? And this one's in the dirt, 2-0. and Okay, maybe Chapman uh, a little wild. Let him get wild. Mateo has got to know that his ability to somehow get on base any way he can is paramount. He would represent the tying run with all that speed and the top of the order due up. The 2-0 pitch is taken all the way. 
And I think he's thinking the same way. Like, you know what? I'm going to take a pitch until I get a strike. Well, he's got one now. Two and one the count on Mateo. Leading off the top of the eighth. The Orioles down a run. And that's a strike two. Outside half of the plate. And, and Chapman is back into this count. Two and two on Mateo. The pitch in the dirt. Three and two. Come on. Come on. A huge payoff pitch coming to the leadoff man here in the eighth. And here it is. Swung on and missed. Oh, that ball dipped a couple of inches below the zone. Mateo swung over it, and there's one away here in the eighth. My, oh, my. Just wish we could have found a way to get Mateo on base there. Hey, Isaac, uh, make sure the live button at the bottom of the, your screen, it, it, the word live, there's a little dot next to it, and it ought to be red. If it's not red, tap the word live until it's a red dot. That's when you know you're caught up. Gunnar Henderson at the plate, and after one pitch uh, out of the zone, the next one is low. So Chapman falls behind Henderson 2-0. Gunner can, of course, tie it up with one good swing. The 2-0 count is low and outside, 3-0. 3-0, Adley on deck. Come on, boys. Now's the time. The 3-0. Low and outside, not even close. Gunner takes a four-pitch walk, tying run on first. Gunner loves to run. How do we do this? One out. I'd love a little hit and run. I don't know about a straight steal, but we've got to utilize something. We got to. If there's one thing the Orioles have been lacking early in the season, it's those situations where we just take that extra base and get really aggressive on the base paths. First pitch to Adley is outside for ball one. Okay, so Chapman, despite retiring the first batter, has definitely been struggling with his command here. Gunnard first, one down, and a 1-0 count on Adley. And here's a check on Gunner. Back in with a slide. Of course, it doesn't help in terms of straight stealing when you got a left-hander out there on the mound. They get to watch everything you're doing a lot easier. Here comes the 1-0, and that's way upstairs, 2-0. That's six straight pitches out of the zone from Chapman. I repeat, that is six straight pitches out of the zone from Chapman, and about four of them weren't even close. Two and zero on Adley, the pitch up and in three and zero. Chapman can't find the zone right now. A walk would push the tying run into scoring position and put the go-ahead run on base. With Santan or Mountcastle and Santander yet to follow, the three zero catches the inside edge, three and one. Adley. Not 100% guaranteed he was taking all the way, but that ball caught the inside edge. He shouldn't have tried to swing at it anyway. Now he needs to lock in. Three and one the count. The pitch. He swings and misses at a what would have been ball four. Oh, God. That would have been ball four. Chapman with some sort of a changeup. I don't know. The bottom just completely dropped out of that pitch. 
and Rutschman was fooled. The payoff pitch hit in the air. Rutschman got under this one. It's down into the corner, but it's foul. Oh, it just hooked foul into the stands. It might have been a little short of home run distance, but it had extra bases written all over it. And the count remains three and two. Oh, so close. Full count on Adley. Mountcastle on deck. Chapman's pitch. Swung on. This one's hit in the air. Backing up as the left fielder, but Adley couldn't get all of it. The left fielder will make the catch about three or four steps in front of the track. And there are two down. Gunner still at first base. Oh, uh, my, oh, my. Okay, well... Here's, here's the good news. It's Ryan Mountcastle against a left-handed pitcher. I like it when Ryan Mountcastle faces lefties. Let's see what Santander, or excuse me, Santander, what Chapman gives him to hit. And so far, the answer is not much because that one's low and inside, 100 miles an hour. One to know on Mountcastle, runner at first. This one's inside and maybe a little bit low again. Two and oh, falling behind yet another batter. Chapman's about to throw his 20th pitch in the inning here. Can the Orioles get that one big hit? The pitch is on the bottom of the zone for a called strike. You guys still live out there in chat? All right, just making sure. What's going on, base? The 2-1 to Mountie. And there goes the runner, and there's not even going to be a throw. Henderson makes it into second with a uncontested steal. But now the count goes to 2-2. Two and two. Tying run now. A single away. And did Gunner steal third? What happened? Gunner did. Gunner just took off and grabs third base while Chapman was just sort of getting into his, uh, wow. Unbelievable. I mean, if that didn't work, pitch to Mountcastle was fouled away, still two and two. Gunner. Stole third base in a situation that you just would never see, especially with two out. But uh, as Chapman was getting into his stretch, Gunner just felt like he wasn't paying enough attention. Took off. Chapman wasn't even into his windup. The 2-2 two -two to Mountie. Swing and a miss on a pitch low and in. 101 miles an hour on the gun. And the Orioles get a runner 90 feet away but can't cash in as Chapman. It was tough, but he somehow got through that inning without giving up a run. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Pirates three, Orioles two. We got three more outs to do something. Oh, Nelly. Oh, Nelly. Yep, the energy is starting to wane. Got a few new subs today, apparently. I mean, the, uh, the spike I saw uh, during the Kansas City series, not quite matching those numbers. I mean, we had 45 in one game, 49 the next game, and yesterday seven. But hey, all I know is I didn't have very much before the first game. It's been a nice, uh, 
been a nice little uh, 226. Hey, how about one more subscriber just for fans of the NBC sitcom 227 starling, starring Marla Gibbs? Come on, who's, come on, who's not a fan of Jack A out there? We can't get one Jack A fan to sub up and get me on a lucky number like 227. Let's go. <laughs> You're not going to find another YouTuber that's going to bring up an 80s sitcom as a reason to get a subscriber. All right, here we go to the bottom of the eighth. Aiken's out for another inning of work, and his first pitch is low and outside to Jake Sawinski. It'll be the four, five, and six hitters due up for the Pirates. Next pitch is outside corner for a strike, one and one. This one's outside, two balls and one strike. Sawinski 0 for 3 today, his average down to 138. This one's hit foul off to the right. Well, off to the right of the camera, off to the left of the batter. Count 2 and 2. Did I ever bring my image back up? This one's popped up, should be playable, but it's a long run in the hard sun and it pops out of Austin Hayes glove. Austin Hayes had to go go to ground. It's a tough sun out there right now. A lot of glare. And I have to think that played some part in Hayes unable to make this catch. The ball was right there in the glove, hitting the bottom of the glove. And out comes Brandon Hyde. So Aiken came out to face one batter. And now Hyde is going to go back to the pen. We'll see who's coming out here. We got a right-hander. Is that Jacob Webb? Not quite sure by the number. Yep, it is. Jacob Webb listed here already on the ESPN uh interactive uh, animation scoreboard, whatever the hell you want to call it. So, yeah, nobody out and a runner on. Of course, the Orioles can ill afford to give up any more runs as hard as it's been today just to get the two runs we've gotten. I would like to go into the ninth inning with only a one-run one deficit. I can barely get sentences out. A one-run deficit. A one-run deficit. A one-run deficit. I mean, I, I can't say I can't say it anymore. If this game goes extra innings, my play calling is probably going to be something along the lines of. You know. Like it's it's getting that bad. Please hit the like button. It helps Steve get seen by more people. It's true. Hey JJ, thanks for subbing. Were you two two seven? Whoa, three people getting me up to another round number. Hey, how about that, people? I just woke up a little more now. Here I was about to just collapse. All right, we got Webb out on the mound. Nobody out, runner at first. And the first pitch here to Olivares is off the plate outside by a solid foot. Olivares. One for three today. Here's a check on the runner. He's back in. How fast is this runner? Sawinski. I hope he doesn't have speed. Okay, JJ. We have established high. 
We're all saying hi back. This one's popped up and back into the crowd one and one. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure you were number 227? If it's true, that's a great badge to have in the uh, bird watcher family. This one's fouled back. One and two the count on Olivares. You're fine, JJ. It's just that when you see the entire chat filled up with just highs it's it kind of makes the conversation amongst several people suddenly look like a, a one-man show you know what i mean but you're fine you're fine all's fine one and two still the count after a couple of foul balls off here by olivares and here's another check on the runner and i think that's the second disengagement so now Sawinski will have the opportunity to perhaps take an extra bit of a lead here or think about taking off with the pitch. We'll see. One and two the count. And up and away, two and two. Ooh. I want to know who the Orioles have do up in the bottom of the ninth. I'll check in a sec. The 2-2 is fouled back. JJ, uh, I'm sorry to report that the uh, realism of getting to a million subs uh, it just wouldn't happen. Uh, as a comp, there is a Dodgers channel and a Yankees channel that does the sort of thing that I do. And they're in the neighborhood of 25 to 50,000 subs. Here's a swing and a foul ball left side, and the count still two and two. Olivares with a seven pitch at bat working right now against Jacob Webb. Yeah, I uh, I'm not worried about even a hundred k. Never mind a million. If I if I'm over 10 k, I'm like a you know a pig in uh, poop, right? <laughs> and I'm not even worried about that. I'm worried about 1K. Let's get to 1K. Hopefully before the All-Star break. All right, here comes the 2-2 to Olivares once more. And this time he lines it in the right field, and it will be caught by a diving Santander. He pops up and throws to first. But it's too late to double up the runner. Another full layout dive. I tell you what, Santander, I do give him a little bit of flack for not having a whole lot of range. But the balls he can get to, he's got really good instincts, a good first step. And if he can dive out, he, he, he makes the catch. Lovely catch there by Santander one down runner still at first base here's Rowdy Telez and the first pitch to him is at the bottom of the zone for a called strike Telez has been on base all three times today singled and drove in a run in the second singled again in the fourth and then walked in the sixth I'd say he's having a great day but he also pulled some really uh crappy base running moves on a play that I consider to be controversial. So it might be a good day in his mind, but he doesn't have my, my respect. I tell you that. I cannot believe what, what makes me the most like amazed is that that, slide they went to new york to like get a, a ruling on it like they had multiple people with every angle to look at it and how they don't see what is 
in plain view. This is lined up the middle of base hit. Perez reaches base for the fourth time today. His third hit. Good Lord. Well, you're my biggest enemy today, but uh, you're definitely putting a hurting on us here, Rowdy. I tell you what, the only way to beat Rowdy is for us to get more Rowdy. We need to get Rowdy. Everybody's networking in check. I swear, I, I know the words coming out of my mouth are like barely English. Thanks for hanging in there, guys. Uh, it's 526 a.m. where I am, and if this game goes more than about 20 minutes, you'll start to see the sun behind me come up with my uh, balcony door open. Actually, I need to close the screen part. Hold on a sec. We have a conference on the pitching mound, by the way. That's why I'm walking away. There's one out, runners at first and second. A conference that's about to break up. Hold on one sec. All right, Jared Triolo stepping into the batter's box. Triolo today, one for three. Singled in his last at bat. First pitch to him is in there, a strike. Oh, that's right. You, you guys, okay, hey, moderators, you have one more duty, which is to say, hey, Steve, are you sure? Like, this is after five minutes of me not being on screen. Like, type in caps, hey, Steve, you sure you don't want to be on camera? Or something to that effect? Please. Uh, I'm, I'm rather absent-minded, particularly at 5.28 a.m. So, uh, please, if you don't mind, help me out with that going forward. Okay, the 0-2 pitch is tapped foul at the plate. Triolo stays alive. Does he, Lizzie, as, as, as much as we have talked, you can't talk to me in the, like, like I'm, like I'm in the room, like, like, Hey, Hey buddy, Steve, come on, Lizzie, how you doing? Christian, there is somebody who knows how to, you know, communicate with another human being. Hey there, Eric, we got people coming in late. We have a one-two count on Triolo. One down, runners at first and second for the Pirates. They're up one run here late, and there's a swing and a miss. Triolo strikes out, and there are two down. Lizzie, is the baseball part of this stream of any interest to you? I'm just curious. Here's the first pitch to Joey Bart, who's had a hell of a day so far. It's upstairs for ball one. Bart hit a two-run homer in his Pirates debut at bat and then followed it up with a double in his next at bat. Two for three today. The 1-0 pitch, swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. 63 people here now. What's up, 63 people? If you don't mind hitting that like button, it helps out the channel. It helps reach more fans of Orioles baseball or baseball in general. This one is a strike on the outside corner at the knees to Joey Bart. One and two now. Webb trying to get the Orioles to the ninth inning with this one-run deficit still intact. The one-two is low and away, two balls and two strikes. Two 
Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and the pitch is in there called strike three. Down goes Bart looking. Jacob Webb. A couple of runners reach, but the Orioles hold. We will head to the ninth. The Pittsburgh closer, David Bedner, takes his final warm-up toss in the pen, and he'll come out to try to get the last three outs of the ball game. While the Orioles will be sending up, please tell me it's a good part of the order. Santander. Is that right? Yeah, Santander, Westberg, and then Hayes. All right, look. We got O'Hearn and Kowser, two lefties. And then Mullins would come up if anyone gets on, another lefty. Are you with me that we just throw all our eggs into the basket and pinch hit Westberg and Hayes for, for O'Hearn and for Kowser? I mean, Westberg, I know we like him, but he's hitting 200. And, of course, Hayes, I feel like, is a no-brainer. You got to pinch hit for Hayes here. You got to. Two lefty bats waiting in the wings. We need one good swing. One good swing. Hit that ball out of the ballpark and tie this game up. Yeah, if Tony Tater can do it for us, that would make it a lot easier. Leading off with a homer, then we can maybe... Not have to uh, use every uh, trick up our sleeve. Sleef? I just said sleef. I am delirious. Once again, folks, your boy, the bird watcher, trying to do this impossible uh, project <laughs> is just... Working on like 30% brain capacity right now. It's, 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 it really is. I, I'm kind of embarrassed. I'm kind of embarrassed. Santander strides up to the plate. Let's put aside all the mistakes I've made tonight. All the mush mouth, all the flubs and goofs. And let's find a little Orioles magic. First pitch to Santander is a breaking ball in there for a called strike. 77 on the radar. Got a feeling Bedner's fastball is about 20 miles an hour more than that. So, wow, that's a two-pitch uh, combo that's probably pretty tough. The next one is a fastball, top of the zone, outside edge. Perfect follow-up to that uh, breaking ball. 0-2 on Santander, who is 0-2 with a walk, but he has a run scored. This one is way up over the glove of Bart, all the way to the backstop, 1-2. and two. All right, that might have just slipped out of Bedner's hand, but maybe that got into his head a little bit. Anything we can find, any sort of opening, we need it. We got three outs to play with. The one-two pitch, we now have two outs to play with. Santander goes down looking on a called strike three, bottom of the zone on the outside corner, perfectly placed by Bedner. That's closer type pitching right there. Santander goes down looking. And you know how Tony likes to swing. For Santander to go down looking in a spot like this, you really got to locate that pitch perfectly. Westberg is at the plate. So my theory of letting the next two right-handed pitchers get lifted for left-handed pinch hitters, so far, not happening. Westberg, with a 1-0 count, takes upstairs 2-0. All right, look. I'll give you Westberg, Brandon Hyde. I'll give you Westberg. And if he can find, find a way on, he's got a 2-0 count. You cannot tell me that Austin Hayes is the answer. 3-0 the count on Westberg. All right, look, if Westberg gets on, you have to pinch hit for, for Hayes. You have to. You have to. 
A, he's not hitting. B, he's right-handed. C, we got a left-hander on the bench that is hitting. And there's a called strike at the bottom of the zone on a 3-0 pitch. Perhaps a gift call there. I mean, come on, really? The 3-1 to Westberg. Line drive, base it left field. A solid single in the left past the diving glove of the third baseman. So Westberg, I never wanted to pinch hit for him. What do you think I am, a fool? All he does is get clutch hits. I would never dream of pinch hitting for Westberg. Austin Hayes, on the other hand. Austin Hayes, on the other hand. Please, Brandon, please. Who is stepping in the hit right now? It's a left-handed hitter. Who is it? I can't even see. Is it O'Hearn? Yes, it is. Ryan O'Hearn is in to pinch hit for Austin Hayes. First pitch is a strike. Next one is low and away. One ball, one strike. Tying run at first base, one out. Cedric Mullins is on deck, another lefty. One and one on O'Hearn. The pitch. Hit hard and over the glove of the shortstop for a base hit. Hit too hard for the lead runner to do anything more than stop at second. That's tough because he could have been a third but still only one out. The Orioles still have work to do here. But a solid single by Ryan O'Hearn. I mean, he barreled that one up. Exit Velo had to be at least triple digits because the sound that ball made echoed throughout the ballpark. And now a meeting on the mound between Joey Bart and David Bedner. Tying run at second. Go ahead, run at first. And up steps another guy who knows how to do things in the clutch, Cedric Mullins. One away. The first pitch of this at bat is going to dictate the whole thing. Here it comes. And it's a swing and a miss. Mullins went after a fastball in the outside corner. 0-1 oh, the count. Lock in, said. Lock in. Come on. Bring us some of that magic, baby. The 0-1 oh, pitch is popped foul behind the plate. 0-2. Oh, Mullins in the hole. Two runners out there on the bases. Come on. How do we get one of them in? We need one of them in. And you know what? I don't want to see any of this. I don't want anything telling me. This has worked before, folks. I'm telling you right now, it has worked before where I just make you stare at my sub count and you'll just have to rely on my play calling. The 0-2 pitch to Mullins. And here it is in the dirt. And it gets away from the catcher a little. The runners move up. The ball got away just a couple of feet. What a huge turn of events. I'm telling you, folks. Every time I bring up the sub page, good things happen. The tying run is now 90 feet away with only one out. He can score without the benefit of a hit. It also takes the double play out of order. Cedric Mullins has two strikes on him. Just don't strike out. Put the ball in play. Let's go. The pitch is low and in, two and two. Folks, you can feel the juices pumping. You want an Orioles comeback? Let's see that sub count go. Oh, somebody unsubbed? Really? You're unsubbing? Fine. Bye. Bye-bye, you birdie. The 230 of us will sit here and watch a little Orioles magic. Here's a ground ball to the right side. Going home with it, and he's safe. The tying run is safe. The Orioles have tied the game off of the closer in the ninth inning. Orioles magic is alive and well. 
I don't believe it. A ground ball to Telez at first. He went straight home. It wasn't a bad throw, but Westberg simply beats the tag. And the Orioles have made it a brand new ball game. Tell me once more. Seriously, Sean, the whip, Mr. Whip. Where are you, Sean? You got to sound off. Chris, whoever, tell me. Tell me every time I don't put my sub channel up. It's not about exploiting you for subs. Look, it's just I'm a superstitious guy, and it's working. I put that up. The number goes up, and good things happen. Colton Kowser is up to pinch hit. Go ahead, run at third. Still only one out. The first pitch is outside for ball one. Pure's in the house. Pure knows when to show up. Another potential exciting conclusion to an Orioles game here. 90 feet away, one out. Swing and a miss. Bedner with 96 on the gun to Kowser. Can Colton Kowser be the hero despite not getting enough opportunities in this person's personal point of view? The 1-1 one, one, up and away, 2-1. By the way, if my voice is getting too loud, just adjust your volumes accordingly. I could get louder. I'm pretty sure the entire floor of my apartment building is hearing the sound of my voice at 5.42 a.m. The 2-1 pitch to Kowser. Swing and a miss at a ball that was in the zone but in under the hands. And Kowser could not bring the hands in enough to get the bat head on it. Once again, we have the, the go-ahead run 90 feet away with only one out. The Orioles have rallied here against the closer. 3-3 ball game. Cows are in to pinch hit for, I guess he's pinch hitting for McCann, which means we've, we're going to lose the DH. Cows are fouls this one back. I would verify that for you, but you better believe it. I'm not moving my uh, my sub chat, my sub uh, page out of the way. I mean, it has worked every time so far. Another two two to Kowser. Hit in the air, but foul. Kowser battling it out here with Bedner. Bedner already twenty three pitches here in this inning. All the Orioles leaning over the railing of the dugout. And over the, their backs, you can see Orange in the crowd. Here's a ground ball. Well, this, this is going to be a play at home. And this time, the runner is gunned down. O'Neill Cruz was playing in, and he guns down the runner at home. You can't blame him for trying. I mean, the play wasn't super close. But you never know. Just a bad transfer or a bad uh, tag attempt, whatever. It was worth the try, but the Orioles run themselves into an out at home plate. Two down now, all not lost. Worst case scenario, we got a chance to go extras. But we could still take the lead here with a two-out hit. And now we're going to have a pitching change or just a conference? It looks like a conference. I wouldn't think they'd pull their closer just yet. Usually you wait till they blow the lead completely. I mean, they did, they did blow the lead, but I mean, give up the, you know, you know what I mean. Craig Kimbrell, the righty, and Fleming, the righty for Baltimore, and Fleming, the lefty for Pittsburgh, getting loose in the bullpen. Kowser at first base. Mullins at third. Good speed on the bases. And up steps Tony Kemp. And the first pitch to him is swung on and missed. 
Tony Kemp. Can he be the unlikely hero? There's going to be a lot of changes around the uh, the de the defense, and when we go to the bottom half of the inning, this one's foul back. It's 0-2. So Kemp comes in for Mateo's spot. So that's a like for like switch. But with O'Hearn coming in for Hayes, and then McCann getting lifted. We're going to have to lose the DH. We're going to have to move some things around. We'll see what happens. But first things first, the 0-2 to Kemp. Swung on and hit on the ground to the second baseman, and that will get the Pirates out of the inning. But the Orioles did what they needed to do to keep this game alive, and we're starting from scratch, folks. It's a 3-3 ball game headed to the bottom of the ninth. Your boy, the bird watcher. 5.47 a.m. Guess what, folks? I got a feeling you're going to see the sun come up over my shoulder. It's that kind of game again. Unbelievable. Thank you for that sub run, by the way, everyone. Again, look, I know it must be annoying. You go to YouTube channels. Uh, like and sub, 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 sub. It's just I'm excited, okay? It's a brand new channel. And I'm so convinced that there's people out there that have been waiting for an alternative Orioles coverage place to go. Maybe a place where you can interact with the game call. You know what I'm saying? Spreading the magic amongst each other. Let's go. Why didn't I have this idea during COVID? I don't know. I'm slow, okay, but the fact of the matter is, who's doing this? I think there's one other guy that will occasionally call Orioles games, but I'm going to call every game. I haven't missed one yet, and I live on the other side of the planet. That guy has the advantage of watching games at normal hours. My crazy ass is doing this in the middle of the night, night after night. Throwing his life into some kind of fever dream. Okay, bottom of the ninth we go. Sorry for all the squeaking that my microphone uh, thing makes, but when I get fidgety, I start fidgeting with the microphone. I can't help it. Craig Kimbrell, the closer for the Orioles, is going to come out in a non-save situation. He wants to get this game into extras. And let's see who the Pirates have due up. I think Bart made the last out, right? So it'd be the nine, one, and two hitters. So he's going to be, yeah. Oh, and speaking of nine, Cabrian Hayes, who got the day off, is going to come in and pinch hit. So you're bringing Kimbrell the closer out to face Hayes and then O'Neill Cruz and Brian Reynolds. So th these are the three batters you want Kimbrell to face. First pitch to Hayes is a called strike. Let's go. Let's get a nice clean inning here, Craig. This one's outside, one and one. Base, I enjoy hearing a comment like that. That's what I'm saying. It's, it's, it's love being spread both ways, folks. Maybe I come off like a jerk. I don't know, but I, I, I just love the Orioles. And... I'm 46 years old. In 83, I was six when they won the series. I've been waiting my whole life. I was too young then to appreciate what happened. One and two, the count on Hayes. Swing and a miss. Kimbrell with a strikeout. One down in the ninth. So, yeah, this is a love affair. 41 years in the making. Everything has come together. I used to have a sports writing job for the Premier League, and that went away last year, which gave me a chance to start watching baseball again. Next thing you know, I make a YouTube channel. It's just all coming together. Here's the first pitch to Cruz, and a beautiful breaking ball that catches the outside corner. That ball was half a foot off the plate. Cruz gave up on it. 0-1 on Cruz. Kimbrell looking sharp so far. The pitch. 
Swung on and missed. 96, top of the zone on the outside edge. A big cut from Cruz. Kimbrell leans in in that trademark style. He gets the sign. The 0-2. Low. 1-2. and two. I'm not that big of a jerk. G give me time, Don. Give me time. All right, the one-two pitch is hit foul back behind the plate. I'm telling you guys, this is what's going to be special about this channel, is if you're following along with me, I mean, you're following a, a journey. Like, this is, again, for me, I, I tell you about everything about my personal life, but what am I supposed to do? By the way, the pitch clock violation, I saw the clock out of the corner of my eye. And it is a violation. Kimbrell took too long. And that'll make the count two and two. But yeah, this is uh this is a this this is uh something special. This is gonna be a special season and a special several years to come. This one's low and in now, so Kimbrell got ahead of Cruz, one and two. A pitch clock violation, and now a pitch inside, and now the count runs full. One out in the inning. The payoff pitch. Swung on and grounded. Ground, and Henderson on the second base side of the bag. This man covers all the ground. Gunner Henderson fields a ball on the second base side to get O'Neill Cruz. Two away. And that'll bring up Brian Reynolds, who's 0 for 3 today. By the way, folks, when we go to the 10th, we won't be looking at this. It'll be uh, back to this, okay? Hey, thanks for that last sub. Here's a pitch on the outside, 1-0 and on Brian Reynolds. This is his fifth time up at the plate. He had a walk to go with his 0 for 3. Here's a swing and a foul ball back. Mr. Ramos, you're in uh, Texas, huh? How about that? I'll shout you out. Mr. Ramos, thanks for being here. I love to see Oriole fans scattered all over the country and the globe. Again, I'm out here in Thailand. I'm spreading the Orioles' love all the way the hell out here. Here's the 1-1 pitch outside and upstairs. That ball got away from Kimbrell. 2-1 and one the count on Reynolds. So, yeah, shout it from every mountaintop, people. Let's get this bird community together because it's 41 years in the making and we need a place to hang out together, don't we? This is up and away, 3-1. and one. Come on, Kimbrel. Lock in. Connor Joe is on deck. The 3-1 pitch. Swung on, hit in the air to right. Backing up as Santander near the edge of the track and makes the catch. We get through nine innings. Extra innings time. It's ghost runner time. Who's going to be our ghost runner? God, I hate this ghost runner thing. Who's our ghost runner? And again, oh, it's going to be Kemp, right? Okay, well, maybe that makes sense. Kemp, Kemp's got a little bit of speed, right? So Kemp will be the ghost runner at second. Adley is now the catcher, by the way. We've lost the DH. That's the huge ouchie right now. The pitch, the uh, Kimbrel is now in the lineup. The pitching spot is now eighth in the batting order. So we'd have to go all the way through the order to get to him. Hopefully that won't need to be the case. So I have to hand it to Brandon Hyde. He did move things around to make things work as best he could when he had to lose the DH and pinch hit for McCann. 
Who's left on the bench? I guess Urias. Is that about it? I think so. Maybe Ramon Urias might take a hint after today's game if he's the only one not to make it in. Uh, Rob, Ghost Runner is a new rule implemented in baseball starting a few years back. I'm, I'm actually not sure uh, which year it started, but uh, in order to speed up the game, uh, once we get to extra innings, there's an automatic runner put at second base for both teams in their half of the inning. The idea is there's going to be a higher chance of there being runs scored and a higher chance of the innings not going 14, 15, 16 innings. Usually with this ghost runner situation, it's done after 10 or 11 innings. The one thing I will say, even though I'm not a huge fan of the ghost runner, and obviously it has no place in playoff baseball, it has been something I think the Orioles have been really good at uh, sort of working with. Whether it's being at home and preventing the road team from scoring that ghost runner, or in this situation, getting our ghost runner in first and then shutting the, down the door. Okay, so again, Kemp is on second as the ghost, and we got the top of the order, Gunnar Henderson. First pitch is off the plate, 1-0. Ortiz is the new pitcher out there, a right-hander. And his 1-0 pitch is grounded to the right side. This will move Kemp up to third. Telez tags the bag to retire Henderson, but the Orioles do the fundamentals and get that ghost runner 90 feet away. We have to get him in, and there's no one I trust more to do the fundamental thing in a fundamental situation than one Sir Adley Rutschman. Rutschman will come in here, batting from the left side. Kemp at third base. The go-ahead run. Now remember, it's a run we need because if he doesn't score, the odds are Pittsburgh will find a way to score in the bottom half of the inning. This one's low, 1-0 one on Adley. 0 for 3 today. He he does have a walk. And dare I say it, I've said it earlier, he's still looking for his first home run of the season. The 1-0 is in there. Call strike on the inside corner. And I just realized again, why am I leaving? This is where I need to be for this portion of the game. And Card Craze just yelled at me about it. Okay, we're all we're we're on we're in sync, Card. We're in sync. The one one pitch hit foul off to the left. One and two the count. You'll we just have to trust in my process, Card. For some reason, whenever I think to do it, it works. Let's hope it works one more time. I'm telling you, if it does, I'm how can I not keep doing it? It's baseball is a superstitious sport. The one-two to Rutschman in the dirt. And the catcher is able to keep it in front of him. Joey Bart. All right. Shouting out some areas around... Uh, the area back home, the 2-2 two -two to Rutschman. Hit in the air. It's going to be deep enough. The center fielder, Sawinski, makes the catch. He just lobs it back in as Kemp can trot home. And the Orioles, for the first time today, are leading. What? What? <clears throat> We're winning? What? Hey, guess who's still in the bullpen that we still could use? Yenier Cano. A don't you know. How about Cano come out and close this thing? Two down. The pitch to Mountcastle is in there for a called strike. Base is empty. Ghost runner has come in. 
Now can the Orioles somehow prevent the Pirates from doing the same thing? Here's a swing and a foul at the plate 0-2. Do you know how pumped I'm going to be, Don, if we can shut down the door? What's going on in the Orioles' bullpen? That's what I want to know. I don't expect Kimbrell to come out and throw a second inning. Cano makes the most sense. Here's a swing and a miss. Mountcastle chases one low and away, and the inning is over. But the Orioles get him over and get him in. A ground ball by Gunner moves the ghost runner to third. A fly ball by Adley drives him home. We go to the bottom of the 10th. Can we get three outs without a run coming in to score? If we do, we win this game in a fashion that I can't believe. My goodness, who, who is the Pirates ghost runner? Please tell me it's Rowdy Telez's fat ass. No, it's going to be... Who is it going to be? I think Reynolds was the last one to hit. I think it would be Reynolds or Joe. One of the two. I don't know. They, they Everybody but Telez and maybe Bart are, uh, you know, average to above average base runners. So it'd be nice if Tele if Telez was the ghost runner, they would just pinch run for him. Despite having a giant day so far, you'd have to do it. You'd have to do it. Going to be interesting to watch. That's right. By the way, folks, the Jackson Holiday Countdown Clock, one week from today, service time complete. I know what you. I know what people say. Manipulation. Manipulation. I need to talk to you people about this manipulation word when it comes to service time. And you're not going to like my take. You're not going to like it. In fact, it's such a complex take that I might need to save it for a time where we're not going to be interrupted by, I don't know, the bottom of the 10th inning in a tight ball game. All right, we're back. So let's see who the ghost runner is just to confirm. Again, Rutschman behind the plate now. Mike Bauman is going to pitch? Mike Bauman? Mike Bauman? Cano's not available? Cano's not available? Oh, okay, folks, I can't look. I can't look. It's back to this. I thought with Cano out there, maybe, wow, we hit 240. Oh, my God. I mean, if we win, how about 250? Am I asking the world? I don't know. Ballman steps off. So how about that? Before he throws a pitch, he uses up a disengagement. Connor Joe at the plate. Ghost runner at second, nobody out in the bottom of the tent. The Orioles clinging to a 4-3 lead. The first pitch is in there at the bottom of the zone, a called strike. What can we do to keep that runner at second right where he is and get this quick this uh huge first out a strikeout a pop-up or a ground ball to the left side a shallow pop-up a foul pop-up something oh and two the count on joe as he fouls this one off how about a strikeout we got an 0-2 count here Bauman's been dealing. Okay, he gave up a home run in his last outing, though, if memory serves. But I'm behind him. I'm behind him right now. And he hits Joe. Did he hit him? Oh, my God, it didn't. He somehow ducked out of the way, and I don't know why. I mean, that ball was nearly head high, but it would have hit his shoulder. But he leaned. I'm telling you, other players would have taken that ball and been on base right now. We got lucky. One and two the count. The pitch upstairs. By some margin, a solid half foot above the zone. Two and two the count. Orioles four, Pirates three, bottom of the 10th. The 2-2 two -two popped up. 
but it's going to get out of play. I feel it. Do you feel it, folks? Orioles magic. Could we be moments away from another wild Bill Hagee chant? The pitch. Swung on him back up the middle and threw for a base hit. The runner is going to hold up at third. But now the Pirates have an excellent chance to tie this game and now have the potential winning run on first with nobody out. Ugh. Are we sure Cano wasn't available? Are we 100% positive? First and third. Reynolds, the lead runner at third. Above average speed. A fly ball, medium depth. We'll probably get him home. How about a double play ball? Up steps Jack Suwinski. The pitch is low and in for a called strike at the bottom of the zone. Nobody out. First and third. How do we get out of this? The 0-1. Tapped foul at the plate 0-2. Come on, man. An 0-2 count. Come on, let's just hope Suwinski is pressing and we can figure out the right pitch to get him to chase. We need a strikeout here like nobody's business. The 0-2 coming upstairs, 1-2. and two. Don doesn't know if he can hear more of, it, of this. I know it's the emotional roller coaster, but guys, this is how it works. The one, two, up and away, two and two. <sighs> oh, two count, and now the count evens up. Bauman, at this point, don't worry about that tying run. Just we got to make sure we keep, you know, we go to another inning. This is upstairs, and now it's three and two, and Joe takes off with the pitch, and now the winning run is at second base, and nobody out. Holy Toledo. Mike Ballman. Pirates fans making noise. Tying run at third. Winning run at second. The pitch. Check swing. Did he go? No. And now the bases are loaded. <laughs> bases loaded, nobody out. Did that just make the sub count go down? <laughs> wow. You guys are persnickety. Good Lord. Do you see me having an anxiety attack over here? That's great. Next time you see somebody in real life, you know, like having a panic attack, do something to make them feel worthless. Like, I don't know, walk away. <laughs> God. There you go. Did I just uh, guilt trip you into coming back? <laughs> we got a meeting out here on the mound. Talking about what to do here with bases loaded and nobody out. Here's an idea. Get somebody out. Danny Coulomb is up in the pin. Apparently Cano just not available today. I know he's had, uh, what, he's probably pitched two of the last three games, but didn't we have an off day in there too? And the sub count goes down again. Okay. I, I, you know, I, I love it when it goes up. I can't complain, I guess, when it goes down. It's up to everybody. Whatever you want to do. Or maybe somebody's just subbing and unsubbing and then just enjoying watching a number change back and forth. I don't know. Want to know the count on Olivares. And the next pitch is low and away ball two. Oh, my God. Are we going to walk in a ghost run? 
The whole point of the ghost run is, is at some point you just got to concede, okay, we got ours in, they get theirs in. You got to worry about the other runners and the fact that they're going to win the damn game. Throw a strike. All right, that one's fouled off, two and one. Yeah, it'd be great to get out of here without having to go another inning. But at this point, again, just forget about the runner at third. The 2-1 pitch to Olivares. Low and outside, 3-1. And, and Ballman is one pitch away from potentially walking in the tying run still with nobody out. Are you kidding me? The pitch popped foul behind the plate, three and two. Hey, it's it's okay, Purple, and and Card, Card, it's okay. It's okay. Pur Purple's just you know he's not saying the f word like as a hateful word. He's and it's ball four, and the game is tied. And now the winning run, 90 feet away with nobody out. Mike Ballman has come in and gotten nothing. Nothing. Uh, if I, Bill, I, I can only explain to you that uh, if you've been watching my streams for the past week, that every time I throw up the sub thing during a crucial part of the game, it has benefited us. It's helped us tie this game tonight. It helped us walk off the game in game one against the Royals. It helped us walk off the game in game three against the Royals. And Bill, if, if you follow baseball, you know we're superstitious, right? You can understand that, right? Superstitions, man. That's all. Uh, the Orioles are going to go to the bullpen. Danny Coulomb is going to come out. And you know what? This might actually work. Danny Coulomb has been cool as a cucumber so far in the season. I can't remember a single batter reaching base when he's been out there. I know he pitched a clean inning his last time out. And his pitches are very, very nasty. They can definitely induce a strikeout. They can de definitely induce a weak pop-up in the infield or something that we need to somehow get out of the biggest possible jam he can be in. Bases loaded, nobody out with the winning run 90 feet away. Hey, Thomas, how you doing, Fitzy? Boy, you came in here at the tail end. It is now, by the way, you can see the sun is up. I've been up all damn night, folks. All night long. I'll tell you what. We got a break in the action. Here's a look at how things are on the scoreboard. Four to four. The Pirates have out hit the Orioles ten to four. And that's all you're going to see because the game is now back on. All right. Folks, cross your fingers, all of them, not just your index and middle. I mean, cross all fingers. Bases loaded, nobody out, winning run, 90 feet away. Rowdy Telez at the plate. Danny Coulomb's first pitch has popped up. Exactly what we're talking about. Rutschman calling, but now it's Mountcastle with the catch on one pitch. Coulomb induces the perfect pop-up right there. That ball maybe was one foot. That was hit one foot. How about a double play ball? Cross those fingers, folks. One away. Still a huge jam. Triolo the batter. The pitch, and it's fouled away. Coulomb with another breaking ball. I can't even tell you what he throws. All I know is it moves about a foot and a half in some direction. 
Might be up to down, might be left to right. It just moves. 0-1 on Triolo. The pitch. Oh, catches the outside corner, and we get some help from the umpire. That was an inch off the plate, and it's 0-2. Oh, can I smell a strike out here? Oh, if we get a strike out here, I am, oh, my God. The microphone's coming out. It's chopped toward third, going home, and we get the lead runner. It's a force out at the plate. Two away. Base is still loaded. And you wouldn't believe who made the throw to get the runner out at home. It's a guy who I didn't know was even in the game, Ramon Urias. It's Urias gunning down the winning run at the plate. Two away. The Orioles can still find their way out of this. My God, what a game. Oh, the subs are getting the 250. Forget about it. The subs are hitting 250. Come on, folks. Base is loaded. Joey Bart at the plate, and the first pitch is off the plate. 1-0. and Quickly, the next offering is high, 2-0. and And Adley nods his head to go, all right, Cooley. Calm her down, baby. Calm her down. We got, we got two outs. The 2-0. Call strike. Oh, a delayed strike call there from the umpire. Why are you giving me a panic attack? That one caught the top of the zone, if at all. My goodness, two and one on Joey Bart. The pitch fouled back two and two, and the Orioles are one strike away from getting out of a bases loaded, no out, winning run, walk off, 90 feet away situation. Can we do the impossible? If this isn't magic, I don't know what is. The 2-2. Swing and a miss! Swing and a miss! And Coulomb does a hop. Adley is pumped. The Orioles get out of the inning. We go to the 11th. Tied at four. LFG. Really? Really? I, I, you know what? It's actually amusing to me at this point. It's actually amusing to me to watch the people that... What do you do? Do you sub, say one thing, and then unsub? Like, is, is my channel that bad? It's like, okay, I'll sub just to say something, but I, I gotta get out of here. Come on! You don't have to turn on the notifications or anything. Uh, you got a subscription to a channel. What do, what do you think? Like, uh, you're gonna get a a bill every month? It's just a little channel. Hang in there with me. You can tell I'm a you know, uh, you know, a bit of a bit of a nut job, right? Who doesn't like to have a nut job they can go to every day and check in with at their own leisure? That's all you got to do. It's a tie game, baby. It's a tie game. Zed's dead, baby. Zed's dead. All right, I got to see who our ghost runner is here. Santander do up. Oh, my God. The ghost runner. Wait, what? We don't have a. That's right. Oh, my God. We don't have a DH anymore. And now that's going to come into play. Oh, my goodness. We have completely maxed out everything. Wait, how is Urias in for. Urias is a third. All right. Oh, so that's what he did. That's what Hyde did. Hyde bumped the pitcher spot by putting Urias in for Kimbrel, made a double switch. And now, again, the pitcher spot is eight spots away. What a genius piece of managerial strategy to figure out a way to not have to use the pitcher at the plate. 
Oh my goodness. I mean, he has maxed out every piece we have in this uh, roster in this game. Brandon Hyde, my God, if we figure out a way to win this game, are there manager of the month awards? You're damn right I'm a nutcase, hun. And the beer is going to be cold before this day's over. All right. Who are you talking about? The Penguins? The Steelers? The Pit Panthers? I don't know. It ain't the Pirates. And right now, there is a discussion with the Pirate manager and the umps. I think he's looking at the lineup card and arguing that whatever Brandon Hyde did is not a legal move. That's the only thing I can gather from this discussion. And now Brandon Hyde is being asked to talk to the umpires. Again, this has to do with what you're looking at on your screen here, folks. Because we lost the DH when McCann was pinch hit for, Craig, Craig Kimbrell was in the lineup. But then after the next inning, Ramon Urias came in as part of a double switch, which took Ryan Mountcastle out of the game, I guess. Either way, the pirate manager is not happy with whatever is going on here. Hey, you might have been out you might have been out uh managed out managed here, buddy. That might be the case. Maybe Brandon Hyde knows how to manipulate his uh lineup better than you do. You ever think about that? Uh you want to go ahead and sit down, buddy, because you ain't winning an argument, okay? In fact, if anything, I feel like that does your team bad. I, I'm not going to say more because, look, anything can happen. But I don't know. I feel like all that barking and getting nothing out of it, uh, I feel like that's telling your team, like, well, I don't think we're going to win it now. Rutschman is the ghost runner, by the way, folks. Adley Rutschman. And the hitter. Anthony Santander. Okay, we're back to here now, folks. Sorry. 252. Two. Front 25. Oh, wait. Front 242. Two. That was a band, right? The pitch swung on and popped up foul off to the right. Okay, let's get back to the fundamentals once again. Same thing as the 10th inning. Number one objective. The first thing you do leading off with a ghost runner is to make sure you get him over to the third. The pitch is up and in. My goodness, Santander. Get out of the way of that one. 96 on the gun. One and one the count. Rutschman, the ghost runner at second. 4-4 ball game in the top of the 11th. We've had everything in this one. The 1-1 pitch. Popped foul behind the plate, 1-2. and two. Hey, Saints, thanks, thanks for the sub. And, folks, again, just to explain, uh, the fact that you're looking at my sub count is not a reflection that all I care about is my subs. It's the fact that I am a very... Uh, what do you, what's the word? Uh, superstitious guy. And every time I bring this page up in a tough spot, it's helped, helped me out. One and two, the count on Santander, the pitch swing and a miss, a huge strike out there for Ortiz. Santander strikes out. Oh, it's tough. That's the thing about Tony. I mean, he can get you that huge extra base hit and cap off a giant rally and win you games. But in these fundamental type situations where it's just like if whatever you do, just get the runner over and he couldn't do it. 
All right, Westberg is up, and he hits one in the center. Coming in is Sawinski to make the catch, and his momentum will make it easy to keep Adley at second base. So the Orioles are in danger of not scoring here in the 11th and making it all the more difficult to figure out a way to win this ball game. Action in the pirate pen. Fleming, the lefty, back up again. Heasley, the righty, getting loose. And speaking of Fleming, it appears that's who is coming in now as Cruz, or excuse me, Ortiz, the righty, is being lifted here with two out. And with a break in the action, I'll bring this back up. Sorry, folks. Once again, I know every one of my streams, I'm seeing a lot of new people come in because I'm a brand new channel, okay? Uh, just started one week and one day ago, and it's been a fantastic experience. The growth has been quick. Uh, the passion, uh, I'm feeling it uh, coming back at me with the, the crowds that are showing up. But uh, the, the reason why I uh, throw this up uh, during stages of the, of the game like this, one thing is this uh, animation, it's ahead of me, and there's nothing I can do about it. Uh, there's nothing I can do about that. In fact, if I went and used MLB.com, it would be even farther ahead of me and be completely unusable. But I'm willing to keep it up there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, you know, during most of the game. But uh, yeah, when we get into these late innings, late inning situations, I, I gotta, I just gotta follow what my heart tells me to do, which is stay away from here. Okay, so let's see who the Pirates have as have a, as a ghost runner at, at this point. And by the way, guys, I I am exhausted, but trust me, I'm not falling asleep until this one's finished. But my mouth, my mouth is turning to mush. My mush is turning to mouth. I don't know what the hell I'm saying. I just want to know who the ghost runner is coming up here. I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Is this updated? It says Hayes is going to lead off, which would mean Bart would be the ghost runner. I can live with that. I can live with Bart as a ghost runner. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. The Orioles are still batting. That is how out of my mind I am. Okay, there's two out and a lefty in to face a lefty. This is why I need to figure out how to get more sleep. Okay, O'Hearn is at the plate. Lefty on lefty. Nothing we can do. Our bench is empty. The 0-1. Swung on and grounded to the right side. Telez has it right along the foul line, and he tags the bag to end the inning. The Orioles fail to score the ghost runner in the 11th. We're going to have to figure out a way to shut the door once more. Heasley has been getting loose. I don't know how many other weapons we have out there that are available if Cano is not available. I mean, look at this, folks. Tate's been in. Aiken's been in. Webb's been in. Kimbrell's been in. Bauman's been in. Coulomb's been in. And now Heasley. I think that's it. I don't know. Can we get confirmation from uh, Mr. Whip, Sean the Whip? Is there anyone else in the pen besides a starter? You know, hey, listen, listen to me here for a sec. Dean Kramer pitches on Sunday, and then we have an off day. And then Burns could potentially pitch on four days rest like normal. And we could just bump Cole Irvin out of the rotation and use him in this game if we needed to, I think. It's sort of that middle, middle off day for him. I do think if push came to shove and this game somehow went more than another inning, Heasley is already being shown to come out here. But, uh, yeah, I got to think. If this game goes more than another inning, we have to think about Cole Irvin as a potential emergency uh, reliever here. My God, what a game! What a game this is! Ugh. 
Just heart attack city. Yeah, but but clearly Cano is like listed as unavailable, Sean, right? I meant like not counting Cano because clearly we would have already used him by now if, if he had any availability. But I do appreciate it. That is technically the correct answer. Cano is in the pin. Okay, so here we go. Hayes is at the plate. Ghost runner at second. First pitch is outside for ball one from Heasley. What a spot it is for him. Oh, this is a lot to ask. This is a lot to ask. High leverage situation for our lowest leverage reliever. And this one is a called strike. We get the call top of the zone. A generous call. Cabrian Hayes, the batter. He started the game with his day with a day off. But like most players on both teams, and this one's ripped in the right center and a diving catch! A diving catch by Mullins, and the runner at second has to hold. You won't believe the catch Mullins just made. An absolute gold glove, gold star beauty. Said the entertainer entertains once more. That is what a center fielder does. That is why he's so important to this team. My God, what a catch. What a catch. One away, here's O'Neal Cruz. Lined in the right field, a base hit. It gets down, here comes the go-ahead run to score, and he's in. The Pirates walk it off. My God. O'Neal Cruz, the hero for the Pirates. A... Uh, Solid line drive down in the right field area. And that's going to do her. Your final score. Jesus Christ. Pirates 5, Orioles 4 in 11 innings. My God. I am exhausted. That was Cruz's first hit of the day. We'll play a rubber match tomorrow. O's take game one. Pirates take game two. What a series this has been so far. I tell you what. I mean, you put this game into a World Series and we're talking about one of the all-time classics. <sighs> Man, so tough. We gave it everything we had. We gave it everything we had. We used every weapon, every trick up our sleeve. And the way, I mean, I'm telling you, folks, I know it's a tough loss, but I got a lot of pride right now. I got a lot of pride in the way we escaped that bases loaded, nobody out jam. I mean, the way we came back to tie the game, to get it to extras, I mean... We scratched and we clawed. We just couldn't get it over the top. And I swear to God, if Yenny or Cano were just available, this could have been a different outcome. Folks, your final score, Pirates 5, Orioles 4. Stand by for just a sec as I give you a sales pitch. To all the wonderful people that have turned out for tonight's live stream, your boy, the bird watcher, is dog tired. But let me tell you, he's going to be back on at what for him will be. You can see it right here. I'll highlight it right there. I'll be back on at 1235 a.m. tonight, my time, to bring you the third and final game, the rubber game of this series. Pirates move to 7-2. and two. Orioles drop to 5-3. and three. Dean Kramer will be on the mound against another Southpaw. <laughs> Southpaw. 
Let me hurry up and get out of here. Marco Gonzalez. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming out to the game. If you can find it in your heart to not unsubscribe after uh, I wrap up, and maybe I can uh, keep this count at 250 or more, then your boy's going to be able to sleep better tonight. You know what I mean? I've had a great time with you guys. I'm going to try to shout out as many of you as I can. Don C, Bass, Saints, Kiefer, Bot. I'm shouting out bots for crying out loud. My friend, Rob, Card Craze, thanks for modding. Sparty, Melanie, Hun, we're going to come back and uh, take the series tomorrow, so get back here, okay? Uh, I mean, just everybody. Uh, Samantha, I mean, there's so many new faces. It, guys, fantastic work. And uh, I couldn't be more... I couldn't be more happy about, uh, you know, the community that's growing here, despite today's result, okay? Where is my uh, little thingamajig? All right. Thanks for being here, guys. Uh, this has been the Bird Watcher. <laughs> and I'll chirp at you later, okay? Take care. Goodbye.